Hello everyone! Thank you so much for joining me here today. We are here to stitch up this cute little squirrel pattern today. Uh, we are going to embroider him. I will go through the whole process with you here today. So thank you for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am typically here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. We are doing a special live today where we can just hang out together and we will stitch this squirrel from beginning to end. Uh, and I'm excited for you guys to be here. I have the chat open so I can see, uh, let's see, I can see what you are saying. Let me get that running here. All right, there, I can see all of your comments. So if you have any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. Uh, I will be transferring the design with you here as well. Uh, so we will go through that process as well. So thank you guys again for joining me here. If you're just popping in, we are going to stitch this cute little squirrel. Uh, I think I might actually give him some toilet paper that he'll be hoarding. <laughs> so it'll be a little, the happy, happy hoarder, I think, this little squirrel. That's what squirrels do, right? Hoard all their acorns. This one's going to be hoarding uh, some toilet paper, and I will show you how to do that. So thank you for joining me. I am going to flip you guys around, and we'll get started here. Hello, everyone. I see you guys popping in. Uh, and thank you for joining me. Uh, please hit subscribe, and if you hit that little bell afterwards, you'll be notified when I do more lives. I think we'll be doing a whole lot more here on YouTube. Uh, we'll, we won't completely get rid of the Facebook lives yet, but we'll be here a lot more. So, all right, I'm going to flip you guys around. Let's get going here. Oop. Hold on. There we go. All right. So I have downloaded my pattern. Oh, Kathy, you want to give yours toilet paper too? Yes. So I will, I will definitely show you guys how to do that. So here's our little pattern. Uh, there is a link to this pattern for free underneath here. So if you go to penguin and fish slash stitch a squirrel, it will be there. All right, so I will do, uh, um, so here's the link for that. It's at penguin and fish slash stitch a squirrel, and it is underneath here if you want to do that link. I've downloaded it here. Here we go. I have it up on my iPad. And uh, uh, you'll notice the design does not have any colors picked for you. So uh, um, I will kind of go over go over how um, you know how you might want to pick colors and we'll go over some stitches as well. So uh, I have printed out this page. I'm going to actually go through a way that you don't have to print it out too if you don't have a printer available to you right now. But I'm going to leave this up just so I have the colors and everything. Uh, but here we go. So I have the pattern printed out here. And I've picked some fabric. Uh, I think I am going to use this pretty purple fabric I found uh, laying around. I'm going to use this for for my um, background color. I think that'll be kind of fun. And then I wanted to use a bunch of grays just because we have all those gray squirrels around here everywhere. So all right, those are my colors. So the first thing we are going to want to do is transfer our design. So if you guys have uh, this all um, out and ready to go, that is great. Otherwise, uh, give me a moment and I will show you a way that you can trace this directly from your iPad. Um, first thing up though, I'm going to prepare my fabric. So uh, like I said, I just kind of grabbed this from my fabric stash. Uh, it's a quilting weight cotton. Any sort of woven cotton fabric will work pretty well. All right, I'm gonna get the iron out here and let's just press a little bit of an area. Uh, here's my embroidery hoop. I'm using an eight inch embroidery hoop. I just kind of like cutting it. I'm gonna cut a piece that's just a little bit bigger than, um, than the embroidery hoop here. So let's give this a press. 
It's nice to use up scraps. Now is the best time. <laughs> when you all are stuck at home, now is the best time to to get going with some crafts. Oh, it's still in your husband's name. So Gail here. Oh, nice, nice, nice to see you, Gail. Gretchen says that she enlarged her a hun hers 150 percent. Her uh, her squirrel on the computer. That's awesome. Feel free to enlarge it or shrink it to whatever size you want for sure. That's the fun thing. You can do whatever you want with this. All right. So I am again just kind of placing my fabric on top of the hoop and I'm going to give myself at least a good inch all the way around. I'm going to just trim it out here. And I don't have, you don't have to be perfect with this right now. You don't have to be perfect with how you cut this out. We can adjust that later and no one's going to see this, this cut. All I'm doing is getting enough fabric to fit in my hoop. And I'm using a pretty big hoop for this project. If you have a smaller hoop, feel free to use that. Whatever you got around is what you're going to use today. Okay. Next up, we are going to want to trace this design. So like I said, if you don't have a printer, I will go over a way to print that soon or a way to uh, trace it soon. But let's look at a few other ways to trace it. Um, you know, right now you can see with this purple fabric, I can't exactly see through it very well. Uh, this is kind of like a dark. I mean, it's not that dark. It's a medium colored fabric. I can kind of tell it's there, but not very well. Uh, so, oh, you're going to, oh yes. So we'll talk about that later too, Gracie. We are going to stitch face masks starting uh, on Monday. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I find the easiest way to trace uh, a pattern is to actually just put it on a bright window. We have a bright window today. Um, if you have a light table that works well, and I'm going to actually end up using my light table just because it'll be a little bit easier for me to sit and do, but I'll show you how to do it on a window. So first you're going to want some painter's tape or whatever tape you have. Which guy do I want to do? I think I'm going to do this one here. So I'm going to just put some tape on uh, my piece here. Let's just put two on the top. And then really, you could just go to a bright window, <laughs> like right here, and tape it on your window. Tape it on just like that. Then feel free, get a, a little bit more tape, and stick that right on top. And look, I can totally see through it now. Definitely, I can see it through enough to to trace it. Uh, so I'm going to actually recreate this on my desk here with a light table. But by far, the easiest way to do it, you can actually just trace it with a mechanical pencil too. Again, whatever you have on hand, that's how we're doing it today. So all right, back to the desk here. And uh, I will show you how to do it with a light table. Again, I'm just doing it with a light table just to make it easier for myself here. But again, window is totally a legitimate way to go here. Okay, so I'm going to do this little feller here. But I said earlier that I want to have him have a little toilet paper roll, right? <laughs> so I'm going to actually kind of draw that first and I will show you how to do that. So let's turn this light table on. You can do this on the window as well. I'm going to get right down in here. So let's, let's design a toilet paper roll for this little dude. Okay. So hopefully you guys can all see. So what I'm going to do first, just for reference, I, so I have, a, I have a separate piece of paper here. This is just normal printer paper. And uh, I'm going to trace his little arm. 
that's going to be my reference point for when I trace the whole thing. And I'm just doing it with pencil right now, which is totally fine. So this is going to be my reference point. All right, let's draw a toilet paper roll. So here is how we're going to accomplish that. And we have all this extra paper that you can practice on as well. And you know, if this is scrap paper, feel free um, to practice as much as you want. But we're going to use some of this acorn as a guide. And the first thing we're going to do is this top arc of the, the acorn here, we're going to just mimic that. So right on top like that. Okay. And now instead of drawing the acorn, I'm going to draw kind of like a rectangle extending from these pieces. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to have it perpendicular to the bottom of the acorn like this. And let's just extend these lines down and I'm going to go behind his little hand here. All right. So you got that. We trace this top arc and then we just made like the bottom of a rectangle here. After that, I'm going to turn this off just so it's out of my way. But here you go. We have the arm reference. We have that top arc and that rectangle. All right. What I'm going to do now is these points of the rectangle, the bottom of the rectangle, I'm going to try and mimic this arc. So I'm going to go just from here to here and we're going to go like the same arc as that. See, so I'm just trying to mimic that. And now we're going to flip it and do on the, do it like the mirror image on the other side of this line. So let's just come down like this. And there we go. So you can kind of start seeing, we have this cylinder going for, uh, for the toilet paper, right? So that's, that's easy. Oh, it kind of looks like toast. Yeah, he could be hoarding toast too, I suppose. All right, so yep, we got these lines. So the last little bit is let's do the bottom of the roll here. So we're just gonna go kind of right in the middle. There's the middle line. We're gonna do an arc over the top of that and an arc over underneath it. So we'll just go up like that and down like that. And that will be kind of the, like the middle toilet paper roll. So now you can go back and kind of make these more, more like ovals. So <laughs> I went to art school, you guys, and I always got yelled at for my cylinders, not yelled at, but like corrected for my cylinders. So I never could get cylinders very well, but here we go. We're doing it here. <laughs> So there we go. We got our bottom cylinder, our bottom oval. We got this little middle oval. We got our two lines and our big oval. So now if you want, you can erase that center line that went through. There you go. That's looking pretty good, right? <laughs> oh, Gretchen says, we, it's working. I'm drawing. That's, that's awesome. Yep. You can do it for sure. All right, there we go. So that's that's our toilet paper. So we need a little bit of a, a swoop coming off of here, right? We need like the, the toilet paper whoosh. Uh, so let's let's have let's have like a little little bit come down here. So I'm gonna kind of make like an S shape. Let's let's do like a broad S shape like that. So it's just kind of I, I started a little bit lower. Don't those, Sylvia says, don't those critiques stay with us? Yes, they do. <laughs> that critique of, oh, I can't draw cylinders. All right, so I went a little bit down. So not quite half. So if this is halfway uh, down down that rectangle, I went about uh, a quarter of the way, and I just did like an S. And you can you can turn it too. If it's easier to draw an S like this, go like that. All right. Now at the end of the year S, you see, you see this line here, we are going to make a line that's parallel to this and about that same height. So let's just go right like this about that same height. There we go. So here to here is about the same as here to here. 
All right. Do you guys got that? <laughs> All right. The last little bit, I think uh, we're going to try and mimic this S, but we're going to have it come off of the bottom here. So if you go right at the bottom, we're going to mimic that S. And there we go. We kind of got a, like a little swoop going, right? It's coming off of the back of the toilet paper here. So we got our little S swoop. We got our line and our top swoop. And there we go. That looks like a cute little roll of toilet paper, right? Feel free to make this as long or short as you want. Uh, if you want to, you know, like I said, you can practice. So uh, um, you can... Uh, I'm like, why can't I move this? It's because I taped it down. Uh, feel free to draw draw it again. You know, I could do another one here. I'm just kind of looking through. I'm going to do this quick. I'm just looking through my, my paper a little bit here. Here's that middle line. You know, you could have it coming up just like that. Like a little up swoop. That's kind of cute too. But there you go. So you can practice and uh, and try uh, some things that you like. And then one last thing, I am going to <laughs> yes, the penguin and fish art class. How to how to draw toilet paper? Exactly right. That's that's poignant right now, right? <laughs> so the last thing I think we need in here is some dotted lines for uh, for the uh, the little papers paper separation so go anywhere you want we're going to go parallel to these lines again though see the, these lines everything is going to stay parallel to that so let's let's just stick one right in the middle i'm going to just draw like a dashed line going down here there that's pretty dang cute right let's put one more let's put one more in in here you can go anywhere within the roll i'm, I'm just going to kind of go i'm going to kind of go like two thirds in or one third in like right here so let's just draw another kind of dashed line we can adjust this as we stitch i don't know that's looking pretty cute to me <laughs> all right you guys i think i think we're going with this guy here so uh what i'm gonna do next is we're gonna actually trace this guy but we are not gonna trace uh the acorn so i'm gonna trace everything the arm you know the face everything and we'll get this leg in and then we will we will stop and then we will trace this guy on so we got our two little templates so we got this template and this template so so we're ready to go so at this point if you want to stick this to your window again i'm using my light table i've taped i've taped it down with painter's tape uh let's let's uh tape down my oop, almost lost my uh, almost lost my fabric here uh, let's tape down I'll get a little higher up so you guys can see. I'm going to tape down my fabric as well to here. Hey, Linda, thank you for joining me. And thanks, everyone, for coming in today. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to be doing this with you. I think this will be fun. All right, so I'm going to stick him right in the middle of my fabric. Let's go right there. I'm using this pretty purple fabric today. Let's tape that up. And uh, I think let's just tape the bottom as well. So I just have my, my painter's tape, top and bottom. I think this is plenty good. All right, we are using the materials that you have again here. So if you have a, just a mechanical pencil, this will be a totally legitimate tool to trace your design. I'm gonna use, and if you have one of these, feel free to use these. Uh, this is one of those water soluble uh, ink pens. They're the, those blue kind of markers. I really like using these and I will show you how to um, show you how to take this off as well when we're done here. So um, Kathy's asking in the design here, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a little bit of his hand on the other side kind of wrapping around the acorn here. It's a little triangle. I'm just leaving that off because instead I have this here. You could put like a little triangle here if you wanted. Um, so it looks like he's holding it on both sides, but I'm just going to, in, in my head, he's holding it here and he's holding it like behind, behind the, the, the piece of the toilet paper here. So I'm just gonna keep the one, but yeah, that's a good question. So I am kind of deleting 
that second little hand fingers here. But um, feel free to do whichever you like. If you want to get get his little hand up, up in here, that would be pretty cute too. <laughs> All right. Uh, Oh, you drew your paper, pa your toilet paper roll and love it. There, now you guys can go draw toilet paper rolls for like the rest of the day. And and seriously, play with, you know, you can do a long, long, long squiggle. And uh, as long as you keep these lines all the same, it'll feel like toilet paper. You know, got an up swoop. <laughs> you can teach everyone in the family how to draw toilet paper today. All right, I am gonna use that water soluble marker here. So there are different ways that you can, um, different things you can use, but just to keep it easy today, you can just use a pencil, you know, a nice uh, mechanical pencil has got a nice sharp tip. I'm gonna use this, so let's get going. I'll get a little bit closer again so you guys can uh, see with me here. And uh, uh, remember, I'm, I am not going to trace this uh, the acorn. I am oop, I am gonna trace his little hand though. Remember, this is our guide. Our hand is, or the arm here. That's what we're gonna need later. Okay, and let's get his little face. So someone asked me the other day if they need to trace every single piece of fur. You don't. Um, I am going to here because I find it just easier to just have it all laid out for me uh, so I don't have to use my brain <laughs> so I don't have to make those creative decisions later I, I like having it all laid out for me but definitely feel free to uh, leave it blank if you want to get stitching right away and then you can just decide where to put the fur if you wherever you want but I am gonna draw it out for myself um, for me, like I said, the less brain power I have to use later, the better. <laughs> I'm going to actually use my brain power, I think, for deciding where to put what color of fur later. And we'll go over that. And definitely, like we talked about uh, earlier, feel free to use whatever size or like enlarge or shrink this. This is pretty small right now, um, but again, feel free to enlarge or shrink to whatever you want. All right, his little nose, get his little mouth and eyes in. Okay, there is a lot of fur. I'm gonna just go at it here. So with these markers, if you are using one of these markers, don't hold it down onto the fabric for too long because it'll make It'll make, um, it'll kind of bleed a little bit, but you know, all that will go away when we take um, the, f when we take it off later. But this is something you can just chill and uh, relax and just start um, feeling it. I, I needed this today, you guys. I was feeling just anxious and stuff and already just drawing these little lines I'm feeling like I can feel like my chest just get a little bit lighter. Ay. So I hope everyone is holding up well um, by you guys. Oh, Gretchen says she saw someone with TP earrings. Yes, so on a more serious note, uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but next week during our normal uh, live videos in the evening we are gonna be making face masks instead of um, we're gonna do the orophil block of the month I might keep that for the week after um, our like extra week but tomorrow or not tomorrow uh, Monday we'll make face masks so I know there's a lot of different patterns out there right now and I thought we could test one every day so every day uh, next week we'll be making a different um, a different face mask pattern and then you can decide which one you like making the best if you wanted to make um, if you wanted to make some for your local hospital we texted uh, John's aunt today and she's a nurse who is working through all this and uh, she said yes they do need the face masks 
We did some research on it today. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of conflicting information out there about handmade face masks. Uh, from what we could tell, they do about um, a 50% job of totally blocking the like 0.2 micron size, which is the size of the coronavirus. Um, it does about a 50% job. Um, the actual, uh, like, what are they, the PE95 or whatever, those those really good face masks, those do about a 97% job of blocking, blocking them. A normal surgical mask does about a 79%. So, uh, handmade actually is still like 50%, which is better than zero, which is a lot of what people are doing. Uh, so I did post an article about it over on Facebook, the one that I'm using. Uh, so it seems like the recommended thing to do is cotton or a cotton blend fabric. And then two layers will give you like an extra, like 2% of how much it, it blocks. So um, all the extra layers actually don't give too much uh, extra, but a little 2% extra, that's pretty good. So we'll be doing two layers of cotton fabric. I'm gonna just use this, uh, like a, a woven fabric like this, just a quilting weight woven cotton fabric. Uh, T-shirts were on the list of other cotton fabric you could use, so that would work. I don't actually have any elastic, so I am going to be doing it with the ties. Uh, but I've heard that a lot of places are recommending just ties now because the um, constant elastic around the ears for people is like chafing their ears. All right. But anyway, so that's that's kind of my thought uh, for, for next week. We'll test out a few. So I'm going to just be using cotton fabric. Maybe I'll try one with t-shirt fabric. We have some old t-shirts. Um, putting, you know, I'm going to make some with a pocket for a filter. You could put something extra in, but I'm not sure putting, you know, like a non-woven fabric in there or, um, you know, an iron-on, some sort of thing. I'm not sure that's actually healthy or will perform better. So be sure to check out that article I posted. Uh, maybe I'll post it here when I'm done too, but I'm kind of using that as my guide. Um, and, and ultimately it's about how you put it on and take it off <laughs> too, like with the clean hands and everything. All right. So, um, I've traced everything. You can see, I'll turn this off. <laughs> He's cute. So I've traced everything but uh, the little area for the toilet paper roll. I'm actually going to now remove, I'm going to remove my tape and I'm going to remove my initial design here. I want to take this away. All right. And I'm going to replace it with my toilet paper roll. So, oh, you guys, John is stitching this with us too. So I'm excited for that. All right. So I'm taping this on so it doesn't wiggle. So get your uh, toilet paper fella out again. And I'm going to turn my light table back on again. If you're using your window, uh, see, no, Aline, see, I'm thinking not lightweight batting or anything. I think the way to go is just going to be that cotton, that cotton thread. All right. Remember I had this little arm that I traced here or the cotton, cotton fabric, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to actually just make this a hair darker so I can see it. I want to match up his arm there. And this is why we drew this arm. I'm going to match up this arm here with the one we already trace and that will help us place our toilet paper. Okay, about like there looks good. It looks like it, he's gonna, it's gonna go over his leg a little bit. So I'll have to delete the leg and I'm gonna have to extend the, the neck unless we kind of go up a little higher. No, I think we'll go like, we'll, we'll keep it right here and I'll just have to, um, I'll stitch over uh, that leg there. So don't worry if you, if you, if you bled over a little bit, if you went over the line a little, don't worry. That's all gonna go away once we take the, take this stuff off. Oh, here's my other piece of tape. So I'm going to tape this down again. 
And let's uh, finish tracing this little bit. Our little fun toilet paper. Oh, I already moved him. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's, we'll just have it be here. Getting that little arc and just draw over your other lines if it overlapped. <laughs> it's funny. Stupid squirrel. All right, and then don't forget your little uh, perforation lines on your toilet paper. Oh, and then I'm going to, uh, well, let's turn this off. I'm going to, <laughs> it's so stupid. All right, I'm going to extend his little face here because it's not all the way to the toilet paper yet. So there we go. All right, you guys, I think we are ready to get stitching on this. So let's, uh, let's get back up here. It's a little tough to see because I am doing the blue on the purple, but, um, I can see it when it's close up by me. So I think we'll be okay. It's again, I mean, it just would be easier to see on white for sure, but I thought this purple was awfully cute. All right. I'm going to scooch this out of the way. All right, I'm gonna start by just getting him in the hoop just because it's gonna be just easier for me to see what's happening. Um, I do have some colors picked for him already and uh, I'll show you I'll show you what I picked for that. Again, there are no there are no um, colors in the pattern. So let's go over to the pattern again. I have it up on my iPad. Oh, you guys, I was gonna show you one other way to trace. So I'll do that now too. But uh, here are, there are no color suggestions, it's just the lines. So there are a few here. So I did this with a purple outline and then here uh, we did another one and they didn't even put the outline on, they just made the tail uh, without the outline so it looks a little fluffier, that's kind of fun. So here's kind of a more brown look, here's kind of a little bit more color. Totally up to you what you guys do, where you put them, put the little lines and I'll we'll go over that a little bit. But let's look at one last way that you could, you could do this if you wanted. So if you do not have a printer, which some of you guys may not have a printer right now, but you probably have either a computer monitor or your iPad. All right, so here is my iPad. Oh, it's flipping around everywhere. So I'm just going to lay this down here and it, you know, let's say I want it this size. All right. You can actually trace directly from your iPad. Now this is not ideal, <laughs> but if you have a computer monitor, feel free to tape, tape your fabric right up against your computer monitor. And then you can trace right through, um, you know, feel free to put like a piece of you know, like a saran wrap on your computer screen first so you don't mark up your computer screen um, and then put your fabric on, just tape it on and you can trace right through it. Um, if you are using an iPad, that does not work because of this. <laughs> you can still, it's heat sensitive to iPad, so I am still like making it bigger and smaller. So that's not gonna work, right? We need to actually put a thick, piece of glass or plastic on here first. Uh, if you just put saran wrap or something like that, that is not gonna work uh, because you'll still, you'll still be able to move it around. So uh, what you can do, uh, if you don't have a printer, if you don't have a computer monitor to do this, if you don't have like a TV monitor to do this, just get your iPad. <laughs> I have a piece of Pyrex here and you can lay that right on top of your iPad. So now I can't move it around anymore. And now, you know, put your iPad as bright as it will go. Uh, it's maybe a little hard for you guys to see because my windows are open, but uh, I can actually see this guy through here. Now there is this much thickness of glass in between me. So it's not, it's a little difficult to trace, but it's doable, right? So if all you have is an iPad, this would be totally legit, totally doable. Um, you know, if I'm in a darker room, you would be able to see this so much better, but I can, I can see these lines. So not the end of the world. If you don't have a printer, you should still be able to do any downloadable pattern. Um, 
just by getting a little creative. I, if you are a quilter and have a quilting ruler, that may be a little bit thinner, but actually this Pyrex doesn't work too half bad. <laughs> so that is a last resort uh, way to trace a pattern if, if you want there. So, all right, I'm gonna leave this guy up as a guide just to kind of help me um, decide what colors to do but I have a, a kind of a plan on that as well. So <laughs> yes, so uh, let me know you guys if you end up doing that, that direction. I know someone who just said that they, oh, Gracie said that she traced it from her, her computer monitors. That's great, off of her screen. <laughs> totally legit, I, I'm down with that for sure. All right, let's get this into your embroidery hoop. So uh, you don't a absolutely need an embroidery hoop, but I, I do like using it. So I'm going to uh, separate my hoops here. And I'm gonna get them right in the middle and put that outer hoop on. You have to kind of spread it apart. Oh, there, now you can kind of see him a little bit better. There we go. So that's what I can see while I'm stitching. All right, and then I'm going to tighten the top. And uh, then I'll just start uh, pulling around. You can kind of see it's a little loose. All those loose little bubbles I'm trying to get out. I'm not exactly stretching it so much as I am just making it not floppy in areas. I don't want to, I don't want to like distort it really. Lucy, I will be making masks uh, tomorrow and next week. I'm hoping to, maybe when we're done here, I'm hoping to kind of look over different mask patterns. So if you guys have a good mask pattern that you like, um, put it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on, on um, Facebook or message me uh, with a link to it. All right. So I think we're pretty good here. So here are the colors I am choosing for this. So I was thinking I want to go more traditional gray squirrel because those are the jerk butts that we have around here stealing all the bird food and everything as they do. <laughs> uh, so I have some grays. I thought I'd do black for like the eyes and the mouth and maybe the nose. Uh, I have this pretty light gray that I thought I'd use. It's kind of like this shiny silvery gray. I thought this would be my main kind of fur color. And then I have this slightly darker, well, more than slightly, but I have this darker gray that I thought I would do for the outlines of the whole, the whole piece. Um, and then I got white for the toilet paper. And I thought for his fur, okay, so I'm going to do most of the fur, uh, this light gray, but then I thought maybe I have this kind of peachy tan. I thought maybe I'd have a couple of strands here and there with with the tan. So just so there's like kind of some texture going on in here. Uh, but first up, I think I am going to stitch the outlines just because that's always my favorite thing to do to do first. So I'm going to grab, um, you know, I'm just grabbing floss from wherever. So whatever you have, you know, I have a bunch on a little things like this. Uh, I have some skeins laying around, you know, I even have, here's my, my bin of scraps, which is just full on scrappy scraps. So if we want to add some color or something later, you know, maybe we even make his nose pink. Let's get some little, let's get some pink out of here. You know, there, I'm just using, using some scrappy scraps <laughs> as well. So whatever you have around, that will be, um, <laughs> Good to go. Yes, jerk butts hold it, hoarding all the teepee. Uh, that's what this guy's doing. You know what? I think I actually might what might want to write like happy hoarder down here. I think that'd be kind of cute. Gosh, maybe let's just do that quick. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just quickly do that. So I'm gonna take this out. I could just write it on. I know we're taking a while to get to stitching, but. I think I want to write that on. Ooh, wow, I can't unscrew this now. There we go. Apparently my right hand doesn't work today. So if you want to write something, like I'm going to write happy hoarder on this. 
I'm going to just kind of use this as a guide. Let's see, where does the toilet paper kind of land? Okay, kind of right here. So let's just write happy Oh my god, how do you spell hoard? If this is not how you spell hoarding, please let me know. Happy happy hoarder. Let's do happy hoarder. There, that's kind of cute, right? Let's do let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my light table over here and I'm going to quickly trace that that on. Let's let's tape it down. Why not add a little text to this? I think that's fun. I don't think I'm going to tape this down. I think we're just going to trace it quick. So let's line up our our guy. Oh, that's cute, right? I like it. I might try and arc it a little bit more. Feel free to. Um, oh, this might be good to date. Yeah, you're right. Let's let's date it too. So when you're doing type, don't make it too small because then it gets a little difficult to to stitch. I think I'm going to adjust the type. We're going to do like a fun arced A. Oh my god, I shouldn't be. I should draw this out before just writing it on. But I can always edit this. Let's do like a loopy. You know, I'm not drawing with permanent ink, so. Ooh, yeah, I got to move over. So if I make a mistake, it won't be the end of the world. Okay, Paula, thank you. Paula said, yes, spelled spelled right. I get paranoid. Thanks for bearing with me as I add to my piece here. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now to business. We have our colors picked. Our design is done. I'm ready to stitch. Let's get this guy going. So I think I am going to start, like I said, with the that outline color. That kind of sets the stage for us a little bit. Good. Kind of seeing why this scrap was in the scrap bin. It's got a little, it's a little dirty down here. But luckily, I don't think we're gonna use that area when we're done. Okay. Uh, let's start with that dark gray. So I'm gonna just uh, get about 24 inches worth. That's kind of my go-to. Um, so this has been on the spool probably since I was 14. <laughs> Um, so I've been using like, uh, this is some oldie stuff right here. So it is pretty crinkled. That shouldn't matter so much, but this is, um, this is the main reason why not everyone likes winding on these spools. I like them cause it's so easy to organize. I, I can see all my colors all at once, but it does give you this little crimp versus if you just keep it, keep it in the, in the, um, packaging like this, but I don't, I don't care all that much. All right, let's snip that. All right, so I'm going to stitch with three strands of floss. So your, your embroidery floss, uh, what you're typically using is called six strand embroidery floss. And if you bop the end of it a little bit, you will see that it's actually made up of six strands and they're really loose. Like you can move them around and they get messed up. Um, pretty quick if you just like leave it laying around or whatever, right? Like, you know, like this is kind of looks like a bit of a mess. Um, but that's on purpose. See how, how they're separating? That's on purpose because uh, as stitchers, we have a choice of how thick we want our lines and we can control that with how many strands of floss we have. And I like bringing this out. We did this little guide once. This is my, my floss thickness guide. This one through six 
shows you the difference of thicknesses depending on how many strands of the floss you, you use. So six is if you use all six of them without taking any out. You know, one, this is just a single, single strand. That's what just one strand looks like. And then you can just decide how many strands you want. I typically, my go-to is three strands, which is right here in the middle. So not too fat, uh, not too skinny. Um, so I'm gonna use the three strands. You can v add variety through a piece by using different amount of strands. So just like go at it, whatever you wanna do for this. Um, you know, it might be really fun for a thick outline and then a lot of little itty bitty strokes with the one strand. It's totally up to you. Uh, but I, I like the three strands. In the picture that is on the cover of this design, that's done with three strands. So if you want a similar look, uh, that's, that's what we got there. All right, so I'm gonna separate the three. So here you can tell, you can see those six. I'm gonna just kind of pull out one, just separate one a little bit from the group. Then I'm gonna hold the rest in my fingers like this, and I'm gonna just pull on that single strand the rest is gonna bunch up behind and look like a pile of crazy. That's gonna be a nightmare. But the moment the thread comes out, it all releases. You can run your hand through there. It's actually really a quick and easy way to do it. So I'm gonna grab my two more strands, isolate that one, zoop. You need the sound effect too. Oh, Amy's cooking while she's watching. Welcome, Amy. And zoop, there we go, there's our third. So this, this piece I'm gonna set aside for later. Uh, I'm sure we'll need it. And these I'm gonna just put back together, I'm gonna line up those ends. There we go, and I'm gonna just run my hand down it. There we go, we are back together here. All right, so one thing I like doing is, um, I don't like having any knots on the back of my embroidery. So uh, I don't like starting with a knot. Um, then, I'll, then I'll have a knot. Like I don't like when the thread accidentally hooks onto it and it just makes like a, a cleaner back without having the knots. So to counteract that, I am gonna actually start with a knot uh, that, we'll, that we will cut off later. And, and it's called an away knot. So I'm just gonna go to the other end here and tie a little knot. This will all make sense in a little bit. And I know if you've embroidered with me before, you've seen me do this. Okay, there we are. Let's grab the needle again. And uh, I like using the pinching method of threading the needle. So I get all my strands together and I pinch, oof, my hands need lotion. So I pinch it together and the moment, I slowly unpinch and the moment I see the thread, I lay the needle on top of there and kind of wiggle it down and there it, it has come through the eye there. Okay, I think we'll just start at this guy's face here and work our way around the body and then we'll hit the tail there later. So, all right. Uh, so I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna do a back stitch for all this. So I'll, I'll go over how to do a back stitch. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start here, but I'm gonna actually start about four inches away and out of the way where, where I'm gonna be stitching. So I don't wanna go up here because it's gonna be in the way of me stitching. So I'm gonna go down here, stitching with this color. So about four inches away this seems crazy and like it's gonna waste a lot of thread, but we are only, only um, doing that once. Oh, Robin, that's a good question. I don't know how you do, I don't think you can do hearts and likes, like so they come up on the screen. Actually, maybe you can. If you're on a phone, I think you might be able to do that. I feel like I've seen that before um, on lives with a phone, but I'm not quite positive. All right, so now I'm coming up up top here. So I'm coming up about a eighth inch of a way. I'm, I'm gonna make my stitches about an eighth inch big. I'm coming about an eighth inch of a way of where I'm actually starting. For, and that's for the back stitch. For the back stitch, ultimately I'm gonna go in this direction, but for a back stitch, you're always kind of going backwards of where you wanna go. 
So I'm coming up a stitch length away from the beginning and then we're gonna go backwards and make that little first stitch. So there we are, that is the first stitch. Second stitch, we are gonna come up. You can see I'm dragging the needle on the back to, so I can find where to go next. I'm always kind of doing that, that drag. And I'm gonna go right there for my next one. So again, about a stitch length away. Pull up, and then we are gonna go in that exact same hole where this last one um, started. And there we go, two back stitches. So I'm just gonna continue that all the way around here. Uh, you'll notice on the back, I have this long bit of thread here. That is where our knot is. We are gonna use that later to weave in the end. So that'll make sense later. Uh, you don't need to do that right now. So let's just continue with the back stitch on here. So this is where you can start to just chill and relax. <laughs> I thought the purple would be, I don't, I don't often stitch on a different colored fabric. So this is kind of new for me. Um, I, I typically go on white fabric. Oh, Gretchen's asking, uh, uh, she has a knot and she's, like what's that trick? So let's see if I can recreate it here. I'm gonna try and recreate this super common embroidery knot. God, I don't know if I can do that. Um, so it kind of happens when stuff gets scrambled like this. Oh gosh, let's just see if I can, here if I pull this through, I think I can kind of mimic it. So, all right, every once in a while you will get one of these horrible knots on the back of your embroidery and it's like, ah, dang, what do I do now? So it, they're super annoying. It's super common for embroidery though. One of these loopy, loopy knots. So the way to get rid of these knots, uh, what I find is I put, usually it has a loop, right? So I put the needle right in that loop. And if you pull, like one, one side makes it tighter and one side pulls it up to uh, the, the needle. So I just wanna just pull up on there and then the knot will eventually get to the needle. And once it gets to that point, then you can just kind of pop it. And there you are. So those crazy loopy knots, that's my way to do that. You, you, you go inside that loop, pull on it till the knot gets to your needle and then it pops right out. That is so common that, um, that knot with embroidery and it really is i think just the thread looping around around itself so one thing that i do to help counteract that is i always have my left hand on the back here or my non-stitching hand on the back and i actually even like having my finger in between the thread that's coming out of the fabric and my needle so i can actually feel the thread go through and I can usually tell when those knots happen because I can just feel it on the back. So I always have an active left hand here kind of doing doing some, um, some, some work for me there. So I'll show you again. So, all right, so I'm putting the needle in here. So this is what it looks like on the back. Uh, I'm pulling the needle through and I'm actually pushing the thread out of my way with my left hand away from the next stitch. All right, so this is what it looks like on the back for me. And then I'm starting that next stitch. And then on the back here, since I've pushed it away, now my finger is within like this loop and I can kind of feel it go by. I can feel if there's any knots happening. Uh, so this is kind of like a visual for me, having my hand back here. I can kind of physically see what's going on. But so that left hand is always active. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I do, I mean, if you get used to having your left hand back there, kind of feeling around, you'll get used to feeling when knots go through and any other uh, little 
annoying things. You know, this thread, this gray is pretty dark. I might, um, I might actually, let's do this in one big stitch. I might actually use this for the eyes and mouth, maybe. Eh, maybe we'll still use black. Cruising around this little guy. So, uh, if you haven't figured it out already, we are going to be here for a little while. This, uh, this live, uh, assuming everything uh, technically works out, we'll go for a couple hours here. I think um, I like I like calling these projects uh, two movie projects. So that could be, you know, or one and a half movie projects. So it could be a couple hours here. This is a little bit smaller design, but there are all those little furry hairs and and everything too. So I'm going to stay here until we get done. Oh, Gretchen says she's copying the cute brown squirrel. Oh yes, those colors are cute on cute on him. I do like that that brown. I was thinking of doing one of those uh, fun red squirrels, but we don't have any of those near us. And I'm like, nope, I gotta do these stupid gray squirrels um, that are around here that eat all of the bird food and take all the things and make a mess of the compost and, and everything. Uh, so I'm like, nope, I gotta do, I gotta do our gray squirrels. So I, I chose some, instead of using fun, bright colors, which was the other option I was going to do, just some really fun, bright colors. I decided, nope, we're doing just the natural gray. So you might see me moving the position of this around quite a bit. And that's so my left hand, you can kind of see it here. My left hand has the best access to feeling, feeling the stitches. So I just kind of rotate to whatever is comfortable. Oh, where will the replay show? Kathy, the replay will be right exactly here. So uh, uh, what you're watching now will just stop and you should be able to replay it in this exact spot after. So here on, here on YouTube. And actually I will, for a lot of you, I know a lot of you are coming from my Facebook, uh, my typical Facebook lives. I will post a link to this video there as well if that's a better way for you to, to save it. But it will be exactly where you are right now. Oh, you changed devices. Sylvia said she changed devices and the iPad is fun. That's cool. Yeah, depending on how you rotate your iPad or phone, uh, it changes how you can see the comments. If you're on a computer, the comments should be right to your, to the right of the video. Oh, Kathy's doing a purple squirrel. Boo, Sue's doing hers in fuchsia pink. Ooh, that'll be fun. Oh, Amy, you're right. I should date it 2020. You're you're right. Okay, you're totally right. We mentioned that, but I I forgot. Let's let's draw that on so I um don't forget again. Oop, jeez. Uh, should we just date it? Let's just call it March. Should we just do March 2020? I'm gonna just literally write it on here. Happy hoarder. Okay, normally I would try and write this out first on a piece of paper and trace it, but I'm going to just guess. And you know what? It's going to be fine. I'm going to write March. So you can add to this as much as you want. And if you decide you don't want this on later, just don't stitch it. And it'll come off when we take the, take the ink off. So March... That's not exactly centered, is it? Oh, well. 20, 20. <laughs> That's okay, right? It can go up like that. I think it's fine. We're going to do it like that. March 2020. Good call. Oh my gosh. Sylvia says a squirrel ran into uh, a hotel and stole a candy bar picture made oh and it <laughs> it made the newspaper that's funny all right i'm gonna stitch i'm taking a pause on the outline quick to uh 
to stitch his little toes in here and then I will continue the back stitch so it kind of covers up these little toe edges. Oh yes, thanks Gretchen. I would love if you guys click the thumbs up button and the share button. Um, yeah, if you have anyone in, in the house or know anyone that may find this to be a fun afternoon craft to do, uh, feel free to share it with them. Uh, and, you know, a kid could totally do this. And, uh, or they could just, you know, you could even color this in with crayon and then stitch on it. That is an option. We've done that before here. Uh, if you do that, then be sure to color it with crayon just very lightly and then um, put a paper towel on top and press it to get as much of the wax out first and leave the color. But that would be a, it'd be a fun group project. And a kid can totally uh, stitch this too and you know if they're not a perfect outline if it's not perfect that is totally fine there's so much accomplishment feeling you know for kids too when they uh do anything any physical craft like this like they made a thing and it exists you know what i mean i i just love that and and kids do too oh yes <laughs> no problem sue yes this is definitely i'm hoping I'm hoping, uh, you know, this gives you a little relief from, from the news for a little bit. All right, I have one more stitch for this leg, and I think that's just about enough. Oh my god, look at that leg. This is already looking freaking cute. It's like a big chicken leg. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, this is it for this thread, I'm going to just call it. So here's how I end a piece of floss. So when I have about four inches left, I could probably have done a couple more stitches, but uh, when I have a little bit of thread left, instead of tying a knot, I will weave it back and forth through some of the stitches that are right near it. I'm going to grab as much as I can, and then I'm going to weave it back the other way, just again, grabbing as much as little strands. And one more time. So the third time is the charm. The third time is kind of what locks it in place. So if you're doing this on like a tea towel, something that you're going to use um, a lot or something that's going to be washed a lot, you're going to want to do this weaving in because it really is a little bit more secure than a knot. And then you can also cut it just right on the edge of the fabric just about. You don't need a long tail. So check that out. It's almost invisible, uh, weaving it in. Like, look how nice that back is looking so far, too. I mean, it almost looks as nice as the front. All right, time to deal with this guy here. This was our away knot, if you remember that from the beginning. Uh, our little knot here. Now is the time that we are going to cut this knot away. All right, so I'm going to snip that. There we go. That's garbage. And let's flip this over. And now this thread is loose. So we're gonna do the same thing. We are gonna weave in this end uh, right there. And again, the reason for this, doing it this way, is so we don't start with a knot. Uh, if you have a knot somewhere, like I find that when you're stitching, you can accidentally like get hooked on it and then you do a whole pile of stitching and realize, oh dang, I've this is stuck on a knot on the back. So uh, this kind of eliminates that problem uh, completely. It just makes it uh, so smooth and, and clean on the back. So again, I'm just gonna kinda, if I suppose I didn't need to go up there, let's grab some of these strands. So this is the second time, second pass. And we'll do one more pass right there. The three times and then we're good. Snip that away. Yeah, I'm all purple today, matching purple scissors today. It's funny, I think I think my phone wants to auto crack this purple, so it keeps kind of graying it out, but it is it is a really pretty purple. 
Okay, uh, let's grab our other, this is our other piece of that dark uh, gray. This is what was left over when we pulled the three strands out of here. So this is already three strands, it's ready to go. So I'm not gonna do that away knot this time. I am going to just weave in the end and get started. So I'm not tying a knot, it is, there's no knot. Let's go to the back. So I'm gonna start stitching here. So let's start and go towards it. That's my first weaving in the end. So I'm gonna get that end real close here. You can actually trim this. Like if I'm, it's actually maybe leave it a little farther away. Then the second, second pass, second time through. There, this is why you need to do more than two because if I pull on this, you can see that thread's coming out. So we're not totally secure here. I'm gonna just pull it just so it's right at the edge. Now this third pass, that's when it all becomes super secure. There we go. Now that's not coming out anymore. And then we're ready to go. We can start stitching again. So we just have a little bit up here. Okay, so remember, I'm not going to stitch into the toilet paper there. I'm going to, these couple little, where I bled over there, I'm not going to stitch that. I'm just going to stitch these little legs. And then I'll probably jump up here and do do this arm right away. Then we have this whole tail to do yet, too. Maybe I'll, I'll go here. I kind of like mapping it out before I go. Um, we'll go here, uh, get the little arm, and then we'll jump up here and start stitching that outline. And again, there is that example where you don't stitch that outline. Gosh, I'm deciding now, do I want to stitch that outline? I, I think I'm still going to do the outline, uh, but feel free not to. It does kind of make it look like a bushier tail when you when you don't do the outline, but I think, I think I'm going to do the outline. Oh, Marlene says her grand, her great grandson always runs to the sewing machine and, and is so interested in it. Oh, and he makes small pillows and oh, and headbands. Oh, that's so cool. That is amazing. That's just so neat. I love that. There is something about putting something into the world that you made with your own body that is just exciting. And kids love that too. All right, I think we'll get this with one more stitch, then we'll get that little back leg. So I'm going right up to the toilet paper here. And now I'm gonna come back around and do the other side of the leg. I think after, after this gray, this dark gray that I'm doing, I think I'm gonna do the toilet paper next, that'll be fun. Bobby says, I think this would be a wonderful project for kids to do. Yep, we all need a laugh and learning new skills is a plus. Yes, and plus, everyone gets to learn how to s draw toilet paper. <laughs> That's a life skill right there. <laughs> oh, man. This could have, like, we could have done a long little toilet paper, but then he'd be super wasteful, too. Stupid squirrel. Oh gosh, the squirrels are just rampant at our house. It is crazy town squirrels. Uh, we can't, I don't even put a bird food for the birds anymore, which is such a bummer. I love watching the birds at the bird feeder, but it legit is just all squirrels all the time. So kind of a no-go unless I just want to feed the squirrels a ton but I have to refill the bird feeder every single day then when the squirrels are there and we've tried so many tricks to keep them away and uh, they're crafty little dumb butts so we're stuck with them and they all have that little smirky face like they're doing something naughty all right, one more stitch here. I'm gonna actually just come up uh, within that hole here. And uh, so this leg is behind the belly here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually get my needle underneath this stitch here and go in the line. I don't wanna stitch on top of it because then it'll look like this leg is in front of, of the body here. I want the body to look in the look like in front. So I'm gonna try and get this stitch behind the other stitch. See, so I just kind of tucked it underneath there. Oops, sorry you guys. Uh, so there you can see this stitch here still looks like it's on, on top. All right, it's looking pretty cute. Got his body going. So I'm gonna just jump up and do start this arm. I guess we'll just start right there. That seems fine. If you are jumping around like this, uh, if you don't want it to be seen very much on the fabric, like if you're using a white fabric, then uh, jump in an area where there'll be a lot more stitches because then some of those stitches will cover cover it up later. I'm not worried about all this fur. Uh, so I'm gonna jump, once I get to here, I'm gonna like jump from here to here because all that, all that fur will cover this all up later. Yep, so if you need a pile of people occupied for <laughs> several hours, uh, go for it, go for us, go for some embroidery. Even if they don't, if no one finishes it, 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 it just totally chills the brain out for, for the amount of time that you're doing it, I'm telling you, once you get going, once you get used to one little stitch, I mean, this is just a, uh, just a back stitch. You know, I'm really not going to use hardly any other stitches for, for this. It's just like, it feels like a coloring book almost. You're just following the lines, you know, you're, it's kind of a free for all what colors you want to use. So it really is, it, it's got that same feeling as, as a coloring book, I think, but more physical, like you it's tangible. Like you can feel these st stitches when you're, when you're done and while you're working on it. And I think that gives another element to it versus, um, versus a coloring book. And again, we will be, uh, this is fun today, but next week we are going to sew some face masks uh, for the nurses in our community here. And it, you can do it for ones in your community. But I'm going to, I'm going to try out, uh, like every day next week, I'm going to try a different face mask pattern, I think. And then we're going to just sew a bunch up. So we're going to look at some of the patterns that are out there right now. There's a lot of them and we're going to just try some of them out. All right, so I'm going to jump up here and stitch this outline, but since there's some stitches, I'm going to actually go underneath those stitches because that will just help hold down this big, this big jump. So there we go. Now it's kind of, now all the, my other stitches are holding down that. So I don't have a big, like a, a big toe catcher, we call it, like a toe catcher where something can get stuck underneath. All right, let's go around his tail here. I suspect I'm going to need more thread, which is a bummer. Um, so I'll have to cut more thread. It's always fun when you have the exact perfect amount of, of floss, floss or thread. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to have that this time. Well, that's right. I talked about having the nose be pink. Maybe we have the nose be pink and maybe some of the text can be pink. Although I don't really have a lot of pink. I'll have to, I'll dig in my, uh, my scrap bin of, of floss. I'm going to get a little up higher for you guys. Maybe this is a little too close for you. All right, again, I'm just kind of turning it so it feels most comfortable with my, my hand in the back here again. So we're going to be upside down for a little while. Oh, Kathy, I am so happy you're enjoying this. I am enjoying it too. And I just love chit-chatting with you guys as well. And ugh, I'm telling you, 
this really did make me feel better today. It was a just, I don't know, anxious past few days and I'm already feeling a little bit better. <laughs> Even if I'm feeling a little bit better for a couple hours, that's, that is positive. Hey, Tracy. Oh, yes. Uh, Tracy likes the, the role of TP. Uh, we learned how to draw a TP today, so be sure to watch the replay if you want to uh, teach everyone in the fam how to draw some TP. Yep, I'm going to run out of thread here. You can see my stitches are getting kind of big. Uh, I'm totally okay with different size stitches throughout the piece. Sometimes when I, I, I'm i on like a straight away, like, you know, this is kind of a barely of an, an arc of a curve. I'll, my stitches will get a little bit bigger. And then if I'm going like around a really tight curve here, they'll get a little smaller. For curves, the more stitches you have, the more it will look like a curve versus like a pointy shape. I think we'll get this in three more stitches here. And I'm going pretty quickly here. Uh, so uh, don't feel bad if you are not as far along as me, for sure. That is not expected. <laughs> You know, I, I, you know, I'm just this left hand working for me on the back. That helps me go a little bit faster, but that takes some practice getting the feel of things. If you get a pile of knots, don't worry about it. That, um, uh, I showed you guys a little earlier how to get rid of those common knots, those loopy knots. I can show you again if you want, if you get stuck with one of those knots. If your back isn't as clean as this, that is fine too. It is just the back. We are just chilling here. And uh, we're making it 80% good. That's that's what I, th that's, that's kind of, if you feel like you're doing it 80% good, you don't have to be perfect. That's 80% good is plenty, plenty, plenty good. All right, I, I think I have just enough to get up right here. I think let's do three stitches worth here. And then I'm going to have to get more thread, which is a bummer, bummer, bummer. Okay, last little stitch. And let's weave in these ends again. It's looking cute on the back though still. So weaving in the back of all these stitches. And there we go. Snip that. And all right, like I said, I need a little bit more thread here, a little bit more floss. I'm still gonna get my yeah, we'll get about 18 inches this time instead of 24. So I'll have that little extra um, thread because I'm only going to get that three strands, or floss, I mean, I'm only going to take that those three strands out again, like we did earlier. But I keep all my scraps. They'll get used for something eventually here. Oh, yay, Judith, I'm happy you're able to to chat as well. <laughs> Robin says, yay, I drew toilet paper. I can't believe I'm drawing. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. I love that. Hey, if that is, uh, I am more than happy to uh, uh, show you how to draw other things too, if you want to learn how to draw something else at some point. But <laughs> toilet paper, that seems like the best thing to know how to draw right now. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to, well, let's weave into the ends here and then we'll just continue the same direction we've been going. I think that's fine. So weave in that end and we will almost be done with this gray. 
I like when I get to finish up a color. That's always feels like a, an accomplishment. All right, so this is my third pass here. And you can see I, I, didn't, um, I didn't pull these ends close. I can actually snip off this little end now. I don't like having all those little fuzzles on the back. I like it um, just clipped right to the stitches. There we go. And uh, we're on our way again. Again, I'm just holding it where it feels comfortable. And we're almost done. Almost done with this outline. Oh, Linda, so I haven't posted the last two B pattern um, videos yet. I will do that when we're done here today. I was having some tech issues with that, and that's one of the reasons I'm here on YouTube now instead of Facebook. So I will, uh, I have to download them and then I'll upload them to YouTube here. But I will get them up. They do exist. Cruising along. Yep, I needed this today. This is nice. So if this is the first time any of you are watching this, I do live streams every weeknight. So Monday through Friday, we're doing a little bit special one today on Saturday, but uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific time. I have a live stream at yeah at 8 30 p.m central and it's typically on facebook i'm hoping after today i can figure out how to be on both youtube and facebook at the same time so you'll have a choice uh at 8 30 p.m where you want to see oh sylvia uh if you asked a question yeah uh ask it again I, I guess i missed it here and if you have any questions please comment on the side i will uh i will answer any any question you got um it's not too dumb all right so there we are our outline is finished let's just weave in this end you know what i think i'm gonna do his face first i want i want to see his little eyes and mouth while i stitched the uh toilet paper so let's do his face i'm gonna use black floss for that i think and then we will stitch the toilet paper. Then we'll have our smiley little toilet papery guy. Uh, and then that'll all be done while we stitch in all his little furs. Okay. Uh, let's start with the pink, actually. Uh, we are going to do his nose in pink. I think that'd be kind of cute. I think I'm going to do his mouth and eyes in, in uh, black, though. So this is from my scraps. I have, I have my little bin of just blobs of rando uh, thread here and I pulled out some pink um, and uh, let's let's see we got I mean this might not even have a six strands anymore oh this this has four strands so let's let's pull out the one strand I'm still only gonna use three strands of floss so let's I think we're good to go now. Yep, we got three strands. So I must have used this. Well, obviously I used this floss at some other time for something else. Okay, let's thread our needle again. I, I use that pinch method where I pinch and as I unpinch slowly, the moment I see the thread, I just kind of wiggle the, the uh, eye of the needle on there and you can just grab it and pull it through. I'm using an embroidery needle. So an embroidery needle has a really big eye right there so it can fit you know it can fit these big pieces of floss through it also has a sharp point um, if you're using a cross stitch needle like if you do a lot of cross stitch and you're trying to do embroidery a cross stitch needle actually has a blunted point which makes it a little difficult to stab through fabric like this so you do want a needle with a sharp point and that and that big eye these are size five embroidery needles uh, we have them in the shop with embroidery hoops right now, but I am, I am hoping to have them more in bulk on the shop soon here too. 
All right, let's weave in the end, and then we will do this little itty bitty nose. Oh, and I got a little knot in the end here. There we go. So I'm just weaving into these gray stitches. It doesn't have to be the same color that you weave into. There we are, our three. Got some fuzzles escaped a little bit. I think I might trim those. If you don't, that's totally fine too. I'm doing it. There we are. Oh, kind of missed one. Come here, fuzzle. All right, so uh, this is a, just a tiny, sorry over there. This is just a tiny, tiny little area that we're stitching, but I'm gonna kind of do it as a satin stitch. So what a satin stitch is, is going from one side up and just kind of filling in a shape. Uh, so I'm always going to start at kind of the bottom edge. I'm going to start actually right in the middle of this nose. I'm going to start at the bottom edge and go to the top edge of the nose. You could probably just do three stitches around and that'd probably be fine. That's probably smarter, but oh well, I'm already doing this. So we're going to go to the top of that little nose. It's such a tiny nose. There we go, we got that one little stitch there. Now I'm gonna go right next to it on the bottom, but up just a hair because it's angling, it's angling up, I'm following that bottom line. And then I'm gonna go to that top again. So we got two stitches really close next to each other there. And I'm gonna make one tiny stitch for the corner of that nose. Then we gotta do the other side of the nose. So a satin stitch uh, is just kind of a way to fill in little shapes. And I mean, like this is an extra little shape, but you could actually do satin stitch to fill in the toilet paper if you wanted to, or something else like that. So I'm just coming up on the other side of the nose now and getting a little, this little pink nose going. I think I'm gonna go right in the middle of that stitch. There's like a little gap there. Oh, we'll just go right next to it. I'm going through a lot of fabric on the back here. There we go, or a lot of thread on the back. All right, let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's pretty cute. All right, I'm gonna weave that in. Oh, how do I fix a loop on the back? So Colette, if you have it while you're stitching, so um, I'll try and recreate one after I'm, once I start up the next, the next um, thread here. But uh, I can just tell you though too. So if you have one of those loops, I actually can kind of re recreate it a little bit here. It's not gonna be quite like this, but I'm sure it'll, it'll feel a little similar to this. So you're stitching and you're like, ah, I got one of them loops on the back. That's annoying. Um, so what I do is I stick the needle inside the loop and you can kind of pull on that a little bit, like hold one side and pull. If that side doesn't do anything, then hold on the other thread and pull. Oh gosh. Now I actually kind of made a knot here, didn't I? Ooh. Well, that's not good. I think I made a knot that I can't get out now. Usually when you pull on it, it will come right up uh, to the needle. And now this guy is not wanting to do that at all. But yeah, typically put the needle in the loop and, uh, um, oh, but if you stitch past the loop, then, uh, then I would just let it be and you can weave it in later. Like this guy is going to be a problem now. 
That was weird because I made a slip knot. This should have came out right away. But who knows, this thread just might not want to do it, this pink thread. So what I'm going to do instead is just cut this off because I'm actually done with this pink, so I can just uh, weave, weave in the end. <laughs> well, that's a bust. That should have worked, but it is not working at all, so I'm going to just cut it off. Uh, if you have a loop on the back, just leave it. The only reason I'm, uh, you know, and if you haven't done that th trick with putting it in the loop um, and, it, and uh, do that first, and if that works, that's great. I'm going to just cut it off because I'm kind of done. So all I'm going to do now is weave in this edge, and I have hardly any thread left now, but if you don't have a lot of thread left, there is a little trick. So I'm going to thread it. All right. Oop, missed a little thread. There we go. You can actually, oh no, I didn't get it. You can use the back of your needle to weave in the end as well. Mom taught me that one. So here we go. So I have it, uh, I have it um, threaded back here. I can actually go with the eye of the needle, so the eye of the needle here, and weave in the back. And push it through. So if you are totally out of floss, you can do it this way. And then you got to get your needle out of there again. So there you go. So that was my, my one pass. I think this time we'll just get the two and be done with it. So that's a little, little bit of a trick. If I get another one of those loopy knots, though, um, I'll, I'll be sure to show you again. I don't know why that one wasn't working. But typically, if you just pull up on, up in that loop, it should be fine. All right. There we go. He <laughs> little pink nose. So silly. I'm going to just kind of poof it up a little bit. I think I was tugging on it a little bit from the back. So let's just get poof it up. I'm going to stick my, stick my needle right in there. And uh, there we go. Uh, that looks a little bit better. Okay, let's do his little eyes and mouth. I'm going to do that with black just because I think it just pops. I always like having at least the eyes pop a little bit more. You know what? I must have a black scrap in my bin here. Yeah, I can already see one. So here's my crazy bin of stuff. Let's just pull whatever this is out. Oh, that's a little short. <laughs> uh, I must have more black in here. This must have an end at some point. There we go. So let's snip this. Rest can go back in my bin. Uh, let's grab our three strands. I <laughs> I do have a cup of tea here. It's probably cold by now. Oh, but it's ginger tea with some honey. It's not even t ginger tea. It's just a cut of fresh ginger, fresh-ish ginger. Um, but the ginger root with some honey in it, and oh man, that's that's been kind of nice. I also have some leftover coffee that I got around here. But yeah, um, John made me that ginger honey last night, ginger honey drink, and I had one this morning, and gosh, that hits the spot for sure. And it's just fun because you're making something just out of it's just honey and ginger, and it tastes amazing. I just love that. Oh, Amy says, light bulb moment. Thank you, Mom. Yes, I know that using the back of the needle when you have that tiny little bit. I mean, it's a bummer when you have a tiny bit of thread left like that. But, uh, man, if you can get that get that last little bit out of it, and that's that's good. All right, I think... I think I'm going to weave in here, and we'll do this eye first, and then we'll do this other eye, and then we'll do his mouth. I think that's that's my plan. I'm weaving in here because there's a bunch of stitches, or there's a bunch of fur 
there, so it'll probably hide hide these black stitches that I'm going to make. And I have this purple fabric, so that's not very see-through either. Okay, so I'm going to start with this guy here. I think, since these are very little, I'm going to just kind of make these like upside down V's basically. So I'm gonna go like one little stitch up, one little stitch down. <laughs> it's already kind of cute. And that's that's all it needs to be. That'll get the effect of the little the little um, closed eyelids, I think. So I'm gonna just jump over to this eye here. Do the same thing and then for his mouth I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing but the other direction an upside down or just a normal V not a non upside down V <laughs> just a V all right there we go and I'm gonna pop down here it's just gonna be a slightly bigger V I do like the pink nose though I'm glad we did that Ah, makes me laugh. Okay, so let's weave in that end, and we are done with the black as well. So that's great. Oh, I've woven a lot into this little bit here, so it's pretty crowded. I'll try not to weave anything else in this little area here. And one more the other direction, and we will be locked in. Get those stitches. All right, let's snip. And we're doing pretty well here. We're about an hour and a half into this live stream, if you just are popping in. And I think we probably have at least that much to go yet. And you know what? I might close my window shade right here because it's going to get dark soon and well no one will be outside to look in i suppose <laughs> but there we go all right um let's do the toilet paper so i got my white here okay so i'm gonna grab you know i'm sure i have used white you know what let's do that oh here oh that's not very long what else do we have for white in here i didn't see a whole lot of white Oh, they're all like weird little, they're all weird little pieces. Okay, I don't like any of these white pieces. We're going to go with fresh white. Uh, so uh, with floss like this, like this is some DMC floss with the two labels on, you can actually pull from the side that has the bigger label. One's a small label and one's the big one. If you pull on the small or the um, one with the bigger one slowly, you should be able to pull out what you need without it getting totally tangled. So I'm pulling, I pulled twice. Let's get a little bit more. We'll get three pulls out of here. So that's that's a little over my normal 24 inches, but that's that's nice because then you can keep it in, in the um, packaging like this as long as you can. I don't always do that, but when I have the packaging like that and I haven't rolled it to a bobbin or anything yet, then, then I like doing that. All right, we're pulling our three strands again. Again, we are grabbing just the one, like we're separating one and giving it a pull. Zoop, oh, got stuck there. There we go. As soon as it all pulls out, it relaxes a bit. Then I run my hand through there. And uh, one more. There we go. So there's our three strands. Let's get them together. And this is obviously for the toilet paper. This is gonna add a lot of lightness to to this piece. Although um, that when we put all the fur in, all that fur is gonna be pretty light colored. 
And you know what? I might not use that tan at all anymore. I was going to add in some tan. I might stitch the whole thing gray. I think we kind of got enough color happening here. But like in, in the uh, uh, example piece, you could uh, uh, do all different color color um, floss if you want. Ah, maybe, we'll, maybe we still will. All right, I'm going to weave in the end here and we'll stitch up, stitch up this guy. Here's some good looking stitches. Let's weave into these. What's the plane situation today? I haven't heard planes today. Uh, I'll have to listen later tonight. Well, it is Saturday, so I think the plane... We, we live by an airport, so the plane schedule, I think, is a hair different. I haven't heard any today. Uh, but yeah, last night they were still going quite a bit. I'm hoping that it was for mail. <laughs> mail or military and not people. All right, I'm going to snip this little fuzzle here. All right, and we're ready to go. I think let's uh, let's start. Um, let's go. Let's go up first. No reason why. So I'm still just gonna do a back stitch. Ooh, this is a little longer thread than I'm used to, so uh, I have to pull my arm back a little farther, which is a little annoying. So I'm again, I'm trying to tuck that white underneath this stitch so his arm looks like it's in front. Ugh, this is gonna be sharp, this white. I like it. Well, that's true. Different color threads could give uh, the fur a different different texture. You know what? We're still gonna do it. I'm gonna do the two colors. And you could do more colors if you want. Ooh, a gray, Marlene, a gray variegated floss would be beautiful for sure. This would be a great project for for variegated threads a variegated thread is just thread that changes color as you go along like it might start out like a lighter gray and then get to be a darker gray uh, it, it's just dyed to have colored to have um kind of a different selection of colors going on in there you know what i think i'm going to stitch this little part and then come back around and finish it because this, this is kind of behind the rest of the stitches. You can go whatever direction you want. Oop. So here we go. We got a little knot going. I'm just going to... It's not quite a knot. It's just... There, my thread's getting a little tangled. I'm just kind of pulling up through that stitch a little bit there. Oh, Kathy, I think that's probably a good idea. Kathy's asking... She's stitching on white. Should I use black for the teepee roll? That's not a bad idea. Um, you could stitch white still, and the texture of the white will will read as white, but it might be hard to see. So I, yeah, if I was doing it, I'd probably do I'd probably do black because the, the the fabric will be white, so it'll still appear as white. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I think I might do this little center circle. I might do that like a little brown. Oh, are you doing that, Paul? If you're doing the acorn, if you forgot the little hand on the other side on on the original, there's a little bit. There's a li like a little hand here. So here's here's the original design. There is like a little nubbin for a hand. It's gonna look like he's holding it if you forgot that. That's. No problem. I mean, I don't. I don't have it on this toilet paper roll here. I think. I think you'll get by with it without that hand. Oh, that'd be an interesting effect. So Judy uh, is saying you could use two strands of white and one strand of gray for TP. So I've never actually done that. You can, you know, I've been using three strands of floss. Those three strands of floss don't all have to be the same color. And that can give you a really cool effect. Um, yeah, I mean, we could actually blend some of our light gray and dark gray threads together for this. I think I'm going to just use solid colors, but... 
if you want to experiment, for sure, try some different color threads together as you stitch. Uh, it, it looks, I've seen, uh, I'll, when you guys sent me a lot of your koalas for the koala stitch along, for the koala quilt, which I'm still working on, um, a lot of you did, did that, combined different thread colors together, and it looked really cool. Ah, Kaylee, I'll have to make another one <laughs> with the variegated thread. All right, I'm going to jump up and do this little dotted line. So this is basically kind of a running stitch. You could actually go in and out. It's a little tough when it's in the hoop, but you could go in and out and in and out all at once. So we'll just do, we'll do two stitches like that. So in and out, in and out, and pull. Gail, if you do, instead of um, the reply buttons, yeah, there's no like button, but you could do at, type the at button and then start someone's name and their name will pop up and then you can reply. All right, you guys, I got one of those knots here. So I got one of those loopy knots. Let's hope I can get rid of it. So I put my needle inside the loop and I'm gonna pull up on that loop and there we go. So the loop is coming, the knot is going right to my needle and then I'm gonna go inside that bottom area and pop it right out. That is, those are those knots. That is how they typically work. All right, I'm gonna just stitch this one last stitch and then I'm gonna jump back down and finish, finish this up. There we go. Now I'll finish up the bottom. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Marge says, <laughs> she says she has to leave, but wanted to mention that this would be cool framed up and hanging in the bathroom. That's a cute idea. I like that. I think I might actually frame this in a smaller hoop. So I do have like a little four inch hoop. Oh, here it is. I think I might, I don't know if it'll all fit anymore. Oh no, with the, with the text, it doesn't fit. So I think, okay, I won't do that idea anymore. I don't know. I'll have to see what to do with this. You could cut it out and put it in a square frame. I'll have to see if we have some frames around. Maybe I'll stitch it to something too. This would be cute on a little bag or something. Actually, you know what? I'm doing this bottom little bit right here. This is that last little stitch before it kind of connects to the bottom of the the toilet paper, I think I'm just gonna pretend it's like I'm continuing the line, like it is real toilet paper. I'm gonna just continue with, now I'm starting on the, the oval, that bottom oval, and we'll just go all the way around. I'll probably get this one, one little stitch in though, too. So I'm gonna, we'll get this stitch. Uh, let's get kind of up to the point here. And let's get two little stitches in here up the side and then I'll continue around. I'll go up here and then try and tuck it under his arm again. and around the bottom edge here. Yeah, I think, I think that other, the like circle, the paper, um, the, the roll circle, I think I'll do that in a different color. I might have some brown hanging out in my scrap bin here. You know what? Let's let's stitch this guy up. Let's go stitch this perforation line up. Then I'll come down on this side and then finish the rest here. Oh, that's true. I could make a an extra roll cover 
like Graham, I used to make for the back of the toilet tank, like where you have an extra roll of paper on the back of the toilet, and it just has a cute decorative cover on it. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I wonder if we could figure out how to make one of those. I'm sure we could. That would be so silly. All right, now let's stitch down this side. I think I have a plan for for the fur. We'll see how it goes. But I think I have an idea. This is looking pretty cute though. You know, some people are keeping a diary of what this time is feeling like for them and stuff. I suppose this is kind of a, like a little diary piece. Where we can hopefully just look back and be like, oh yeah, that was a thing we did that one time. <laughs> and, and that it's nothing more than that. That's, that's what I'm hoping, right? Ugh. All right, last stitch here. Let's tuck it under. Oh, I suppose we can connect it. Let's connect it to this last little point. There we go. Pretty cute. All right, let's turn it around. We only needed one piece of thread for that. I did kind of get a pretty long piece of white. I got a longer piece than I typically like. If you have a long piece of floss that you're using, your arm has to stretch a little bit longer, like farther back. So it's a little bit harder for repetitive stress. And actually your threads going like rubbing through the fabric quite a bit. So that's a lot of friction on the thread. So it could get fuzzier sooner with these long threads. I just kind of stick to my 24 inches or so. All right, let's uh, finish up this, this toilet paper. I'm going to see if I have some brown, like I must. Oh, so here's, here's some tan. Okay. I have kind of a tan. Oh, I have kind of like this golden brown too. Let's see what we like better for this little bit. Oh my God, this is a mess. Look at this wacky piece. All right, there we are. Oh, I had some grain here that I could have used too. Oh well. Oh, I think we're gonna use this. It's a little bit brighter. I like it better. So let's get a, find an end here. This is kind of a knotted mess. This is from my stash of rando thread bits from when I'm done with other projects. All right, this should be plenty. We just need a little piece of this. Oops, there we go. Oh, I, I kind of do that to Colette, but this was, this was an extra long piece, that last piece. All right, so let's separate our threads. There we are. Okay. I'm gonna thread this. I didn't really put them together very well, but I think we can get them all. Yep, there we are. And yes, let's uh, weave in that end like right here and then we'll do that little circle. Yay, and then we'll do the fur, the fur and the text and we're done. Third time around here. Okay, this will just be a couple little stitches, but I think getting the whole extra color together, I think that's going to make it look kind of cute. Uh, we'll take off the blue. If you're using a blue marker like this, we'll uh, we'll take off that blue yet today as well, and I'll and I'll give this a little final press after we do that. 
to. Oh, there, I think this is a nice little touch. Oop, there, I got another one of those little knots. Let's get the needle in there. I might have to actually unthread it to have enough slack. Ooh, this one's not wanting to go. There we go. There, it's up against the needle now. And now we just pull on it and it pops right out. But now I gotta thread the needle again. Two more stitches and I gotta thread it all over again. So the, the ones that are knotting up, oh, I guess the white knotted up a little bit, but uh, the ones that are knotting up are the ones that have just been thrown in my bin that have been all tangled and messed up. So when those knots happen, it's usually because one piece kind of tangles up on another piece. So these are already like pre-tangled. <laughs> silly. So silly. Still looking pretty nice on the back. We'll snip that and alrighty we are getting there so all right it's time for the fur so you can see all we drew in all those little fur lines I have uh, basically two colors that I want to play around with for the fur I have this lighter gray that I think will look kind of nice I could actually bring in some of this darker gray again but I think I'm gonna leave that as just an outline uh, so uh, here is this lighter gray. That's going to be my main color. But we talked about maybe adding another color. I do have this kind of tan. I mean, it's kind of like a cream, cream color, I guess. Uh, but I thought maybe I'd blend, not blend, but I thought I'd use both of these. So I think the way I'm going to think about this is most of it's going to be this gray because I want it to feel like a gray squirrel. That's my goal, is that this is one of those gray squirrels that run around by our house. Uh, but maybe wherever I think, okay, so this will be a little weird to think, but pretend this is a squirrel and it's sunny outside, okay? So the sun will be above it. So wherever I feel like it would be a little lighter from the sun, maybe I will stitch some of this. So where I'm guessing, and, and let's do that first. And then I'll fill it in all the rest of the stitches with, with this gray. So where would it be sunny? Well, this whole top of the tail, so any, anywhere that it's kind of on the top. So I think his, his tail up here would be hit by sun. Um, maybe it goes down a little bit into here. You know, maybe the top of his leg will be hit by sun. Maybe his little, little arm, the top of his arm, top of his head. So I think all those places that might get a tiny, tiny bit of sun, a lot up here, uh, I think I'm going to use this, this tan. And I'll, I'll like extend it a little bit down so it's in a few other places as well. But then the rest I will fill in with, with the gray. So that might be a way you want to think about it. Or you could just do like blend the colors all together, kind of like how I did on the... the um, the example in the in the photo again I'm pulling from the side with the bigger um, the bigger label there we'll just do two pulls this time all right let's snip that yeah so I'm thinking about the sunny bits at this at this point I think I think this will work and then the rest will fill in with the gray. This is pretty light. Uh, this is a light color, but I think the gray that I'm going to be using is going to be pretty light as well. So I think it'll kind of work. All right. We're experimenting here. This is what's going to be fun. Every single one of our pieces are going to be totally different. 
And even though it's the same design, even if everyone in your household did one of these, they're all gonna feel like totally different fellows. They're all gonna feel like their own. And I think that's what's gonna, that's what's just so neat. So I would love, uh, if you're not part of our Penguin and Fish Crafters group on, on um, Facebook, I'd love if you joined that group. So it's Penguin and Fish Crafters. It should pop up. It's like Penguin and the Ampersand um, Fish Crafters. And then just click join and I'll let you in when we're done here and then uh, just share, share what you're working on. All right, let's, let's start with the top of his head. So I'm going to just weave, we'll just weave in right behind his ears here. Okay, this is the second pass. I'm going to just kind of jump around with this, this color. So I'm not going to be too worried about all my little jumps on the back. All right, so let's, he has a, you know, it's sunny on the top of his head. I don't want to make all of them this color because I still, again, want it to feel gray overall. But I think a few blips of this on the top of his head, kind of scattered around, will make it feel like the sun is hitting his head, I think. Let's maybe do this guy down here. Let's do one more here, maybe. And whatever you do, it's going to be fine. It's going to just look like silly little hair. Oh, yeah, Kathy, that's that's one of the reasons I want to move to YouTube here a little bit. I am, I'm actually hopefully going to go live on both YouTube and Facebook at the same time now. I'm hoping to get that set up when we're done here today. Um, but yeah, if you want to just share with me, you could always email me at like info at penguin and fish. I'd love to see, love to see your finished piece. All right. I think this is enough. This last little stitch here. I think, I think we're going to have a feeling of a little bit of sunlight up there. Um, let's jump over to the, to the tail. So this tail, I think I want a lot more kind of of this light color up here and then not so much everywhere else. Uh, same thing, the sun would probably hit hit up top here more than other places. So I'm gonna just kind of fill in this top a little bit. But if some of that other gray comes through, that's, I want that as well, that the light gray that I'll put in next. It's looking cute though. I mean, we're kind of getting a sense of that light, right? I mean, even even without the other stitches in here, you, you do get a, a feeling of kind of like highlights on his head and highlights on his tail. I'm putting a little bit more on the tail here because I do like that feeling. I mean, I could have done the outline right there with, um, with some of this light color too, but I think it's fine. I, I do like outlining things, so he just has a, that dark outline. But there is a, that example, there is that example on the pattern uh, that shows if you don't do an outline at all on the tail and it's just like fuzzles, that looks pretty cute too. So I'm not doing every one, but I'm doing a whole lot of them up here. And if you guys are just coming in, this is a reminder, this is a free pattern. It is up on my website. There is a link below to it. It is uh, penguinfish.com slash stitch a squirrel. Uh, but there is a direct link to get you there as well. Feel free to download it and stitch it up. I showed at the beginning of this video, there'll be a replay of this once we're done, but I shared how to actually trace it if you don't have a printer or anything available to you, except for, you know, a TV or your computer monitor or your iPad. Uh, there is a silly little way that we looked at where you can still trace the design. Yep, so it's free. And I'd love to see, love to see what you're making. Oh, you like the highlights. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and this is a small enough embroidery that you could do a couple. All right, 
do we want more? You know what? I kind of want to fill in. Let's let's fill in all of these ones. We, we have the gray too, but let's say the sun's really hitting the top of this guy's tail. Let's get it all that light, that light color. And I think um, I think I'm just gonna pepper. I think that's pretty good. You know, we're hitting the top of the tail. Let's just pepper a few in here and there, like just one little bit of fur here and there is uh, getting hit by sunlight. Let's do that. So that's that's good. Let's do one like right here. And maybe maybe going down the tail a little bit. Not too many, but enough to make it look like it's kind of blending from light to dark a little bit. Some speckles, speckles of light. We'll, we'll do like We'll do like one more. Let's do right there. That's fine. All right, actually, and uh, I might have just enough thread for this. So I'm going to jump over. Let's get a couple couple in his uh, on his arm here, I think. Let's let's get, you know, his little shoulder here. Maybe that has some light on it. Let's just do the two stitches right here. Let's his shoulders his shoulders got some light and let's the top of his the top of his leg looks like it should maybe get some light too some sunlight so we'll we'll do a couple stitches there and then I think the rest we will we'll do all of that light gray we'll do three here one two and uh and three Cute. All right. Funny. All right. I like it. We're hitting some light. I, I, there'll be little speckles of light. So let's, let's weave that in. And now let's fill in every single rest of other one of those um, little hairs with our light gray that we have. Then we still have the, the type to do. Let's, let's do that too. Okay. Oh God, it's just so silly. All right, uh, let's, this is kind of a little tangled and weird here. So hopefully that doesn't get in our way. Uh, I'm going to grab from down here still our two pulls, that two pull I think is good. So this is pretty light. I think it'll blend right in with that tan color that we use. It's actually probably not gonna look all that different. It's just gonna, it's not going to look necessarily lighter, this sunlight. It'll just be kind of a brighter color, basically. We'll see how this looks. All right, get that other piece to the side. I think we'll need that later. Like I said earlier, I, I don't stitch on colored fabric very often, so it's kind of fun for me. It's, this is, a, this is, feels different for me to be stitching on this purple. I usually like um, a white muslin or a unbleached muslin, like that nice tan color. Uh, that's kind of what I used on the cover of this pattern. So I thought I'd change it up. Let's play with a different fabric today. And you can use whatever fabric you got around. All right, uh, let's just, what should we do? Should we just work at the, let's do the body. So I'm gonna just work from the top and I work my way down, I suppose. So let's just capture a pile of these stitches. Oh, this is a nice way to spend the afternoon. Feels good. Oh, I got one of those knots already. You know what? I think I'm just gonna uh, pull it out. All right, so starting over that's the first this is the second there we go and one more one more woven bit all right now we're good all right i am filling in every single one of these little bits now all the rest of these little hairs so this is another time that we can just chill. Oh, 
Oh, you could definitely embroider on t-shirts or tote bags. Uh, t-shirts are a little trickier. Actually, they're a lot trickier uh, because it's a stretchy knit fabric instead of a woven fabric like, like this is. So um, you actually will fare better if you, on a t-shirt, if you put a stabilizer down first. So that could be an iron on a stabilizer. You're basically making the, the, the um, t-shirt not as wiggly, <laughs> not as stretchy and wiggly during the process of stitching. Uh, it, it is doable without, but it's not really all that pleasant <laughs> experience. It just, uh, your stitches don't look as nice and they just bunch up and they go everywhere, but um, it can be done. But yes, there are some stabilizers that you can get if you want to stitch onto a t-shirt. Oh, this is going to blend right in. It's just going to look like a few speckles of a lighter color. That's going to be nice. So many little furry hairs on this guy. So we will just be chilling here for a little. This is where we're really adding, adding some texture though. Oh, the live notification didn't show in your subscription feed. Oh, that's interesting. So while I'm live, okay, Robin, I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, the other live videos are not actually live on YouTube. Those were live on Facebook and the YouTube were, were the replays. So this is an actual live YouTube. So that might be a little bit different. I know there's a live tab, so it might be in the live tab on my website while I'm live, but I'm hoping that the replay will be along with the normal videos. It should be in the uploads section of, of the videos. Yep, we'll get this type on. I'll have to figure out what to do with this. <laughs> Someone suggested that I should do little, do embroidered um, face masks, but I think that'll take too much time. And, you know, I don't want to poke holes in a face mask, so we won't be embroidering any, any of the face masks that we make. I want to just make as many of those as I can. Although, it'd be awfully cute embroidered. All right, I'm going to do his little arm here, and then we'll get back to the body. Just kind of working my way down over the whole body, and then we'll, then we'll get the tail. For some reason, I'm feeling like that's a different section to do. So the, the, that, um, the light color is really subtle, but you can see all the little, little flecks of it. So it's just going to be a tiny detail that you might not even catch just because of the colors that we picked. This light gray and that light tan are so close uh, that it, it is pretty subtle. Went dark on Facebook for me. Oh, Marie, are you watching on, on Facebook? So maybe John might have shared it to Facebook. I don't know. So we're not actually live on both right now, but I am hoping to do that in the future. So I'm hoping that we will soon be live both on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And really, we could do Instagram stories and, and all that. Okay, I'm going to jump down and do his leg here. Oh, I said I was going to jump back up and go over here, but I didn't. Now I'm, now I'm down here. There's a little furry leg right here, furry stitch. So 
So I, this is kind of like a seed stitch um, where you're just doing a bunch of little short lines. Oftentimes you do a seed stitch uh, to fill in a, an, a, a space like this. Uh, a lot of times if you're getting super fancy, you might be doing a seed stitch like this just to pad. Uh, like if you're going to do a, a, a satin stitch where you go over a larger area, you might want it to feel poofed up a little bit more. And so sometimes you do a bunch of seed stitches underneath it like this, just so it's like pads up, like makes the satin stitch a little poofier, which is kind of fun. We're doing it for fur. Yep, Pam, and I think I think we're gonna do that. Uh, my brother has warned me that it's it might be against the terms of services of Facebook or YouTube or both. Um, I've done some digging and I can't quite find that. But the, the thing is, if it is against the terms of service, then um, then you can get you know shut down. But you could get shut down for any reason. So. But yeah, I think uh, since I've been having so much problems going direct to Facebook the past couple days, I, I haven't gotten the last two videos uploaded yet even, uh, that I may be just doing both at the same time to under this new system that we're doing today. Uh, I, think, I think we might figure that out and just do it. Be done with it and just do it. So yeah then we can do Facebook and, and YouTube. All right, I'm just gonna go until this thread is gone and then we'll start up again with, with more of the gray. He's kinda losing his fur now, it looks like, doesn't it? We'll fill them in. It's going to be cute with this. Yeah, Pam, I think it was, I, I'm, I'm hoping this is the case, but I think it, I mean, I think it was an older thing. And I know what some people did is they had different phones for each service, but I think now it's allowed. There's services that you can purchase that will make it, the ability to do to do it but um i think i don't know we're gonna have to look but i think maybe until recently it wasn't a hundred percent allowed but now it's just so common that i think i think they have to do it, it's it's physically possible i'm not saying it's not physically possible because i know a lot of places do it it's just um it might be a, just a terms of service thing because you know Facebook doesn't want to mingle with the Googles, which is what YouTube is. YouTube, or Googles, uh, YouTube's owned by Google. I'm just kind of going by rows. I'm just kind of going back and forth here. Whatever feels right, I'm trying to fill in, fill in the spaces. I think this light gray is looking really nice though. I'm happy I went with a gray squirrel, um, just because there are so many by me here. So one thing I have not done during this time today is take a break and a stretch. Uh, if you are stitching with me, feel free to stretch. I'm going to try and push through till I'm done here, which I know is probably not smart, but I'll probably do a little bit of yoga or something when I'm done here just to stretch out because this, this is a lot to do in one sitting for sure. Um, you know, I'm going to roll my neck a little bit as I go here. Relax the shoulders a little bit. Do some shoulder rolls. Oh, so Robin, yeah, with three different phones. So that, that was always the trick. So if you wanted to stream at different places, you had to have actual physical different devices streaming it. You couldn't do it from the same device, and that's that's I think where the terms, that's where people like were tricking the terms of service, I guess, 
was using different devices. I'm not sure that's true anymore because I've done a lot of searching. I'm going to have to actually like dig in it a little bit more, but we might just risk it and go on both um, just because I know there's there's people that don't have Facebook and there's people that don't go on YouTube, vice versa. So it'd be nice to do, do both here. Then you can choose. Yep, good idea. I should get a sip of this tea. Once I'm done with this thread, which I'm just about done with, I will grab that tea and drink a bit. Ugh, look at his cute little leg, all these little stitches. I am loving this fur. It's just so silly. I think it's turning out pretty cute. Let's get these guys before I get too far. I'm definitely going to have to get a new piece of floss soon. Ugh, and I'm not sure I'm going to have enough thread to finish this whole thing. I might have to get a whole new piece out. But whatever. All right, one more. This is going to be the last one and I'll weave in the ends. And then we'll get our I'll get a sip of tea and we'll get the next piece off. Oh, look at all those little stitches here too. Cute. Looks more like little rows on the on on this side. <laughs> These I jumped around quite a bit. All right, there we are. Ooh, your husband just made you a martini. That's a good husband, Kathy. We're gonna stick with the tea, I suppose. All right. Yummy. Oh gosh, that is good. Ginger tea, ginger and honey. All right, other thread here. See, so very subtle, those different changes of colors, but it's just one little subtle little thing that I think is nice. I could have done a little bit lighter or a little bit more golden on the sunshine, but the sunshine areas, but I think we're perfectly fine here. Ooh, Renee's got a glass of wine sitting on the patio. So my husband uh, does websites and that sort of thing. And he worked on a website for a brewery in town here. And uh, all the bars are closed. All the breweries are closed, uh, or the tap rooms at the breweries. So that's a huge bummer for local businesses, obviously. Um, but they have started to do curbside pickup of crowlers, which are those like quart size uh, cans. Uh, it's it's not a growler, but it's a massive amount of beer can still. So they're doing delivery or a drive-by pickup of these beers, and you can order them online. And uh, since he's working on the website, they said, just come over and we'll give you some. So we may, <laughs> we may have to take a field trip uh, to St. Paul and stay in our car, which is quarantine for us. And we may have to get... Um, some of these drive-by beers. <laughs> oh, you got curbside pick up by you too? Yeah, is, that's nice. We've not done that yet. We've not done that with any restaurants. It does seem like a little bit of like a, eh, do I need to take that risk? But we might do this curbside pick up of the, um, of the beer crawlers. They don't uh, deliver outside of St. Paul, so they won't or I think a little bit, but they won't bring it all the way to Minneapolis here. So we'll have to go get it. But tomorrow, tomorrow I will be at the Penguin and Fish warehouse again. Again, just me and John. There is no interaction with anybody. We go in our own door and we're in there. Um, but we'll be getting together your orders again. So all all the recent orders from Penguin and Fish will get done tomorrow and uh, ship out on Monday. So uh, if you did want anything from the shop, uh, now's 
the time to do it because we'll fulfill it uh, tomorrow. But tomorrow when we're out and about for that, maybe we'll go go get these crawlers. Kathy says she's doing the hometown pizza and, and support the local businesses. Yeah, that's kind of, that's why we want to do this. And um, we might actually, I don't know, we might get some gift certificates at least for the places that we frequent so they can make some money. What? Texas has delivery of alcohol so you can get margaritas delivered? Dang. That's neato. All right, uh, done with the body there. Let's let's just jump in, and I guess let's just jump in right here, I suppose. Since this is kind of where I left off, we'll we'll do this and then work our way down down this way, I suppose. Oops, and we'll get all these little furry furs too. So after this, I will stitch the type, and then I'd like to, um, I have a little bit of water here in a towel, and I'd like to just kind of dab off um, my blue ink here. I think it actually works best by just kind of, probably just dipping it into water. I don't always like doing that because you get it soaked. I'm going to just dab it off. But yeah. I'd like to finish it completely, so I'd like to get the all our blue marks off. If you're if you trace it with pencil, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, all your stitches will basically cover up the pencil and no one's gonna look that close anyway, so He's coming along, coming along. Yep, I'm feeling it. We're going to need a whole nother piece of thread. We're going to rotate a little bit. I'm feeling like I won't have enough here. It's fun with just the little bit of different color, that tan color. It's it's just enough. I'll take a, a good picture of this when we're done here. The light's changing quite a bit as we stitch here. Um, so I'll get a I'll get a good picture so you guys can see the stitches a little bit better. Let's rotate back. If you iron, if you have iron off marker, would that work? You can use that. Um, I actually really like those friction pens. Those, those, they're like basically Bic pens that, um, if you put heat on them, they, they come, the ink comes off. Um, the problem is that that ink is always kind of there. So, uh, you can kind of, I would do a test on an area of your fabric because sometimes you can see where it like fills in the gaps in the fabric, like with like a clear sludge almost. Um, I would see if that looks okay on your fabric. And then if it gets cold, it can kind of come back. They do right on so nicely though. That's, that's the thing. They they do work well, but yeah, there's just those little things that are kind of goofy with them. But whatever you got, I would, I would use. I mean, your stitches are going to basically cover everything, so I wouldn't worry so much. Oh, thanks, Grace. Grace likes our TP. I want to see all of your guys' uh, TP that you drew too. So, um, if you email me, I wonder if people can post here. I, I have to dig into YouTube a little bit more. I know they have kind of a bloggy type area now. Uh, but if you are part of the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook, I know not everyone is on Facebook, 
but I'd love to see what you're stitching. Love to see how your toilet paper turned out and um, how it turned out. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see, see them there. And if you're not a member yet and want to be, uh, just do a search for Penguin and Fish Crafters on Facebook and I will click join and I'll let you in when we're done here. Then you can post. And if not, and you still want to show me, I would love to see it. Uh, you can just email it to me at uh, info at Penguin and Fish. Or to add more stuff to it, uh, you could post it to Instagram. If you have Instagram, post your uh, guy to Instagram and tag me. Uh, or, yeah, tag me with Penguin and Fish. Yep. Sylvia, exactly. You can at Penguin and Fish me if you do it in uh, in your stories or, or your page. I would love to see it. So all those places, plenty of places to, to share. Alyssa, did you make your homemade bone broth? I, I made, I think that's in, the, in my plan because we got some sitting around and there's going to be a lot of soup being made soon here because we got a lot of like beans and rice and kind of a soup mixes that have a pile of grains in uh so i think bone broth is on the menu i i did make some chicken broth out of um the leftover chicken you know we just got one of those five buck clucks or whatever uh those pre-roasted chickens from the grocery store i i did make one some out of that and I made our last soup out of that and it was good. Um, so, so we'll be making more. I do like making it. I have some in the freezer yet, which is awesome. So we'll use that for soup and then I'll make some more. It's time to make some soup though. Cause we need, we need that stuff in the fridge again there. I like, I like soup, 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 soup. Um, Kathy, I'm hoping that they'll be on both. So Kathy's asking, will I be doing the face mask uh, videos? We'll talk about that again now uh, on Facebook or YouTube live. I'm hoping, and I'll let you guys know if this works or not. We're gonna test it later today. I'm hoping we'll be able to do it on both. So you will basically get to choose whether you wanna be on on YouTube at, at that time at 8.30 Central, PM Central, or if you want to be on, on Facebook. So it'll be on both. Uh, maybe we can get it going on Instagram Live. I think Instagram Live has a time limit, so we'll probably get cut off there. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping both. And if it's not going to be both, I will uh, try and let you guys know. And honestly, if it's not both, I think it'll probably be YouTube. I think we'll probably end up doing it on YouTube because this has been working and it has not been working on Facebook as well lately alone. So but we'll see. I'm hoping it'll be both. Because then it'll be just like our normal Facebook Lives, but it'll also be here on YouTube for people that want to watch live on YouTube. All right, we're almost done, and I got to get another piece of floss. So I think this is my last stitch here, and uh, we'll weave in this end, and we'll have to pull a whole new fresh batch of floss. But he's looking pretty dang cute. And you can see a little bit of that lighter color up there, or that more tan color. I think it's a, it's a nice effect. It's subtle, but I think it's nice. Subtle's okay, right? Things can be subtle. Ooh, I'm excited to see John's. So John is working on this too. I wonder where he got floss from. Oh yeah, I gave him a whole pile of floss that he could choose from. Um, excited to see what his little squirrel, see what his toilet paper is looking like. So John, uh, my husband John is working on this at the same time. Yep, I saw that too, Kathy, that face that Joann's has a face mask pattern on their website, and there are a lot going around now, and they are all pretty, I mean, 
they're similar, but but a lot of them are different. So some have that wire piece in the nose. Um, I would actually like to do a couple that have that in because that the more secure this can be around your face, the better, right? The more little holes, um, that's that's a problem. So those those little nose wires are nice but we'll do so those are those seem from what i've seen so far are seem a little bit more intense i mean not intense but a little bit more advanced i think there's some really simple ones out there too so i what i want to do so this is the plan next week instead of working on um the orophil block of the month which is typically what we would do the fourth uh, full week of the month we're gonna work on face masks all week during our face during our live stream instead. And what I'd like to do is do a different one each day. So we'll basically try out five different patterns that are out there right now. You can, and then that way you can do each one of them and you can see which one you like best. If there's one that you just didn't like doing or one just seemed faster and easier or one that you think, you know, will function better or maybe there's actually one that um, you like a little bit better and, uh, or one that that is that your hospital is actually saying they like better, then, then you can do that. Oh, Paula's saying the problem with the wires is they may not stand up to washing and definitely won't stand up to microwave sterilization. Okay, so that might, so there's, there's that. Ugh. There's just, there's a lot going around right now on what's right and wrong for all these. That's a very good point though. So they will be sterilized in the, in the hospital. So that, that could be a factor for sure. Uh, some of these might just be used by, uh, you know, like nurses and stuff that might not, oh gosh, I don't know. It's just like some of our nurses by us, I, th I don't even think have any, any of them. Oh, Catherine, if you want to send them my way, that would be fabulous. Uh, you can also, you can also see if there's a hospital near you that, that needs them. I know every hospital is kind of, you know, doing their own thing. Uh, John's aunt, works for the hospital right next to us here and we asked her this morning if they need them and they do so so we are we're gonna make them for her and her co-workers uh i would if you want to send them to me i would take them and that would be amazing of you to do that would be amazing so yes i will take them um i will um post i'll post an address um in the Facebook or some something, I'll, I'll post our address or on the YouTube when we do the videos or whatever that um, we can do. Yeah, check with your local county health department too. That's good, Nora. Yep, uh, Missouri Star Quilt Co. just did a, a simple mask today. Yep. Oh, and firefighters too are running low. Gretchen says, you know what, even I was just thinking, geez, the, the grocery workers and the mailmen and all them, I mean could make them for them too, you know, like give them to your mailman. Um, and all those grocery workers too. It's crazy. So really, you know, so I, I did a little bit of research. Uh, so there is a Cambridge study, university of Cambridge, uh, that was done I think in 2009 where, where the H1N1 flu was going crazy and they tested, they tested how household or DIY masks, uh, fared against, you know, how they fared against different size per particulates basically. So the coronavirus is like a 0.2 micron. I think that's correct. 0.2 or 0.02. I think 0.2 gosh, I don't know, but micron size particle. And so they were testing that size. Um, they're testing that size, which is now similar to the Corona, um, virus COVID-19, um, size. And they found, uh, different things around the house that worked well or that worked. I mean, 
And the worst, the worst was still over 50%. So um, their recommendation based on breathability, since that is very important still, uh, breathability and uh, um, material was like t-shirt cotton or other uh, cotton fabric or um, cotton blend fabric. So that's why everyone doing the ones out of quilting weight fabric will be good. So that blocked, the real masks block about 90% of um, the part the particulates, but the the um, the homemade masks, like double layered of um, just quilting weight fabric or, or just t-shirt fabric still did 50%. So not perfect, not great, not what should be being used. There should be like really good ones in all the hospitals, but there aren't. Um, so 50% is still way better than 0%, which is what it is if you're not wearing a mask. So uh, uh, I'm using that as my guide. I'm not putting any extra non-woven fabric or filters in. However, some of these have pockets. Some of these mask patterns have pockets in it in case you do want to put something else in there. So we'll make some with pockets. Uh, in the end, you want it as secure around the face as you can. Uh, so, so nothing can leak in the sides or escape the sides as easily. So that's why the nose bend. But yeah, maybe that's not great for, for sterilizing. So what I'm going to do is I want to make these a few different kinds and then see what um, John's aunt, like what will work best for her. And then I'll make a pile more of those ones is what I'm, what I'm hoping to do. And I'll report back how that, that goes in, goes to. So um, I'm going to try some out tomorrow, hopefully. And then um, during the week, every day of the week, we'll do a different one. We'll do a different pattern and see how it goes. So we'll get some sewing, sewing happen. Starting using up that stash. That's what we'll be doing. That'll be good. But yeah, I'd love if you sent me some, but I'm guessing there are places local to you that probably would need them as well. Oh, can I post a supply list? I will, uh, well, what I'm hoping to do, if you guys have suggested patterns that you want me to try, uh, be sure to let me know. Um, you can just put it in like the message here, or I actually don't think you can put links here. So you can put it on, on Facebook or just email me if there's a certain pattern you want me to try. Some definitely look more difficult than others. Um, but yeah, I'll pick five. And then before we go on, um, I'll kind of write down what you need. I think for all of them, if you have some quilting weight fabric and uh, um, a sewing machine, you're gonna be good. Uh, there's elastic. So most of them have elastic bands. I don't have any elastic. <laughs> so I'm going to use all, I'm going to use, I'm going to make ties for them all. So people will have to tie them around the back of their head instead of going around their ears with elastic. But I've also heard that that's almost preferred now too, because the elastic is chafing behind people's ears. So that's kind of crazy. Um, so mine will all be with ties, like fabric ties, but I'm hoping to show you how to do the elastic if you have the elastic as well. <laughs> He's so silly. All right, you guys, let's get this text written in. Um, I'm wondering what we should do for that. I, I do still kind of like the pink. Let's see what that kind of looks like down here. We could do a totally different color too. Maybe the pink is too much like the like the purple. What if we pop the green in? Ooh, how about green? It'll look like he's on, on grass, uh, like standing on grass. I do have a lot of this really kind of bright, pretty green. I'm just pulling out of my crazy stash of stuff here. Oh, that green's fun. Why don't we do green? And then maybe the, I have a different green for the, for the March. Two greens? Let's do two greens. I like it. Uh, they're slightly different. So we'll do this brighter green for the happy hoarder and then the darker green for um, that. Oh, Paula says, plus some people have life-threatening allergies to latex, which is used in some elastic. So another reason 
um, for that. So I am I'm going to use again because of availability. I'm I'm just going to use I'm going to make ties. So I'll probably be making a whole lot of bias strips. I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit more. And um, yeah, so uh, you know. This is all on the fly. I'll be looking into it a little bit more tomorrow when I come back from shipping your orders. Uh, again, I'm going to the warehouse tomorrow to get, get orders ready again so they can ship on Monday. Um, and, and after that on Sunday, I'll be experimenting with the masks and making them. John is going to be making them too, so that, that'll be fun. We'll get to two sewing machines going, or maybe he'll help cut and, and I'll sew, or we'll see. We'll make some sort of assembly line. So next week, uh, I want to, with you guys, I want to test different patterns and maybe I'll do a little bit of that on Sunday. And then I just, the one that works the best, I'm just going to try and make a bunch. All right. I think I'm going to just weave in his foot here and then just start, start stitching along this way. Just jump jump to that letter H. Oh yeah, green works for March because of St. Patty's Day here. And thanks again, you guys, for joining me over here. And thanks for your shares and your likes and all that. I appreciate it a ton. I think we're gonna, um, I'm hoping to do a lot more of these for sure. All right, starting the happy. Oh, this is gonna be pretty, I think. I think let's do three stitches down. Ooh, I kinda got a lot, lot of green here. Oh, Amy says they made almost 20, she made almost uh, 20 masks today. That's amazing. You'll have to share those. I'd love to see those as well. Uh, and let me know your tips and tricks if you've noticed anything from making them or something that works easier or whatever. I know nothing. So uh, I haven't made any yet and I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to get that going tomorrow. There's been like so much weird information going around about them. Like some don't know they're bad because you, you get more germs everywhere, or viruses and whatever. Um, Oh no, they're good. So now, now it looks like, you know, I did a, a little bit more digging. If you do put them, take them off and put them on incorrectly, then yes. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. You still have to take them off and put them on correctly. Otherwise you're going to get, you know, just contamination everywhere. Um, but if you can do that, like washing your hands and then putting it on and then washing your hands and taking it off, then that's good. And it, it really, these masks are really meant for if you're not feeling well or someone around you isn't feeling well um, to reduce the risk of a person not feeling well and spreading it. It's less for, um, just if you're by a lot of sick people who are, you know, coughing and stuff, but still the, the 20 or the 50% effectiveness is better than 0% for sure. All right. Getting all these little stitches in. I guess, I mean, my type is kind of blending together a little bit. I think I could have put up more space in between the letters, but I think I think it'll still be readable when I'm done here. Yeah, you can read it. I think. I think we're gonna just do these in two stitches, though. These. These these lines. Um, it is kind of a pretty small type that I wrote. The bigger the type, the easier it's gonna be able to be stitched. You could use less strands here, if you want. That always is nice for type. Oop. Well, 
Wow, you guys, we've almost been streaming for three hours here. <laughs> so thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me and sticking with me here. It is nice to be able to have a day where my brain can be at least slightly somewhere else for a little. Yeah, and I still want to take off the blue marker today yet. I have a little bit of water and a towel here, and I'll try and do that. Still got to decide what I'm doing with this little guy. I don't know. What popped in my mind there was, oh, I'll, I'll have to go to the... the um, uh, like the Goodwill by us and uh, the antique store or whatever and see if I can find um, find an antique hoop like an oval hoop that I could go in but I can't do that but that's that's the first thing that flipped in my head and I'm like nah, can't do that trying to decide right now should this say happy hoarder or happy hoarding because I could change it to an ing I don't know I, I think we'll stick with the hoarder because this guy's the naughty little squirrel hoarder yep a hoarder not hoarding that feels like I'm encouraging hoarding then I don't want that Happy hoarder it is. Decision made. <laughs> Getting this little oh. Hoarder is fine, okay. Yep, I think I think yeah, let's just stick with that. So getting there with with this word, and then we'll get that little darker green for the March 2020. All these little circles, these little O's, take more stitches to make them feel like O's. Oh, I just did one big stitch for this H, and here I did three stitches. That's okay. They can be different. It actually seems it's a, a little bit more readable with just the big stitches. Maybe I'll stick to that, the kind of big stitches. I think we'll probably s still do two for this A. Oh, I'm hoping I can not use another piece of floss for this, but there's one around. I, I have to use another piece. That's fine. <laughs> Stupid little toilet paper. Naughty squirrel. Rotating again just so I can feel my stitches with my left hand. <laughs> Curious if John gave up or if he's still stitching this. <laughs> This is a long, this is a long time to be doing one thing, but I, like I said, I find this just so calming. Like, even that click that the, like this, that the thread makes going through, just hearing that click over and over again, I'm ruining it with all my yammering on top of it, aren't I? This could be way more relaxing. We could be doing, like, an ASMR of embroidery. <laughs> it's relaxing though. It's calming. Any moment of that during, during the day is 
is good. This is a little skinny D. Bigger E. Oop. I think I'll have just enough thread for this, which is fabulous. I think I'm going to try and move this E over just a little bit because he's kind of being crowded a little bit there. So all these updates, like if you've downloaded the pattern after we got started here, um, all these updates with the, you know, adding this text and having um, the little toilet paper, we did that during this live video, but I show you how to draw it and stuff. So uh, be sure to check out the replay if you want to learn how to draw some, some TP. If you want him holding that instead of the little acorn. One last little R. I think we'll just have enough floss. So this type isn't the most uh, legible, but I think it's still it's good enough and it gets the idea across. I think if I were to do type again, I'd probably have the letters a little further apart. Um, but I think uh, I think it's totally fine too. I kind of like that they're all different sizes. It's kind of fun. All right, last stitch with this this green. Here we go. It's looking fun. <laughs> There we go. And uh, uh, let's do that last little bit. Yep, um, Pat, so Pat said had to create a channel to chat. So you have to think of a channel. That's just their um, YouTube's way of saying like a profile. So you're basically creating a profile for yourself. Um, it's not like you have to, like the word channel makes it sound scarier than it is, I think. Um, so you're basically just making a little profile so your name comes up basically in the in the chat and i think if you have like gmail like for your email i think you can just log in as your gmail and it'll it'll work out all right all right this dark darker green i'm using for gosh this is a mess too here's an end um for the march 2020 And then we're done. <laughs> All the little fur. I think that's fun. So, yep, I'm still going to take off the the um, blue marking pen. So I'll kind of show you that a little bit if you're if you're using that. And uh, um, it's also I'm also going to show you a way to to press it uh, at the same time after I do the marking pen. So uh, we'll do one and then. As I'm taking the pen off, I'll get the iron all heated up and uh, we'll do both. And this is especially nice if you've been working in a hoop and you have um, have your like a hoop line. This will help with that. All right. Let's get that one thread down a little bit. There we go. Home stretch here. Grab my needle. Okay, I, I'm gonna just weave into the backs of these stitches and we'll start at this letter M. So 
still looking pretty nice on the back. It's not looking super, I mean, it looks messy, but it's not, I don't have those knots around, which I like. My thread hasn't gotten caught on anything. That's what I don't like about having knots on the back. So we've been weaving in these ends. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right, I think I'm gonna just do big stitches for these lines. That actually kind of looks nice, I think. So this is just a little darker green, not too much darker. Yep, Robin, I'm hoping to do both YouTube and Facebook uh, after this video here. This seems to be working out. Uh, so we'll hopefully do both at the same time after, after the day. We're gonna figure that out a little bit more this evening and, and hopefully by Monday, our next live, unless I go live at some point tomorrow, we'll see. Um, we will do both. Oh, this green is pretty. Slightly darker green here. I think first I will stretch my shoulders and have some food and drink some tea, and then we will figure out uh, getting this on Facebook and YouTube. We basically have a plan, but we gotta set it all up. Oh, Joe, that's so awesome. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe's daughter who's on the East Coast and, and Joe who's in Wisconsin, we're watching at the same time. <laughs> That's neat. Oh, and you're doing the grow embroidery too. That's nice. So yes, yeah, so I, I don't have the grow, the last two. Oh, the grow video. Oh, never mind. I was thinking I was thinking that's what I don't have uploaded yet, but nope, I don't have the the B kind. Our our embroidery from yesterday last week, the last two videos I have to upload, so I'll do that when I'm done here as well. I know some of you guys are waiting on that. So Pat, I am still thinking of, or I am still gonna work on the Aurafil block, but we have that bonus week this month. So I, I have, it's, I have everything scheduled, um, you know, this year uh, for each full week of the month I work on a project. So typically the fourth week of the month, I would do the Aurafil block of the month and uh, quilt along. But I was gonna do the face masks instead. So that's next week. But we have a little bit ex we have some extra days this month. So uh, we actually have um, the end of the month going into April, we got like a, an extra like bonus week in there. So I think maybe we will do the Aurafil block of the month then. So we will, we will pause on it so we were just gonna work on unfinished projects then, but instead I think we'll do the Aurafil block of the month then. So if you're with me on all my my weekly projects here, next week we'll be doing um, face masks and we'll do a different one, a different pattern for each day of the week, assuming that I can do one in one day. I don't know, that might get updated. I'm gonna have to try making one tomorrow, but it sounds like you can make a bunch all at once. So. I'm hoping that each day of the week we will do a different style or a different pattern, um, a different person's pattern, because I know there are a lot going around right now. So you can basically try them all and then pick, I just spit on this, you can try them all and then pick which one works best for you, because I know there are a bunch. So we'll try a bunch of patterns out next week, and then the week after, our kind of bonus week, we'll do the oral fill block. I'm also hoping to sew quite a bit next week. So I might just, if I'm just sewing face masks, I might just turn on the live and you can see where I'm at. But in our in our normal times at, at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, we'll go, we'll, we'll do our little kind of tests of the different patterns that are out there right now. But during the day, I'm thinking I'll just be sewing, sewing some stuff. We're still doing orders and everything as well. So we're trying to get to the warehouse a couple times a week to still ship orders. So if you, if you still uh, need your embroidery fix and you need the stuff, so you want a kit or um, 
tea towels or anything like that. Uh, we still we still are shipping while we can. I don't you know. Obviously, I don't know how long that'll last. Okay, Amy's doing the one by the Deaconess. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, hospital. Yeah, there's just so many right now, and they're all all different and. So I'm hoping to do to like tomorrow, today and tomorrow, kind of pick five. And if you have ones like you just recommended that that Deaconess Hospital one, I'll check that out. Um, if there's one you want to recommend to me, um, try and do that today or tomorrow because I'm going to test them out tomorrow on my own. Um, or I'm just going to look at a bunch. Uh, I'm going to look at a bunch and choose the five that we're going to be working on. So I will choose the five uh, that we work on one one day a week. I'm trying to have it be a variety. So it's like some will be a little bit more intricate. Some will be, you know, a little less. We'll see. That's what I want to look at um, today and tomorrow. But I'm hoping to uh, give the give them to John's aunt and then she can tell me which style they like the best uh, at her at her um, at the hospital her and her co-worker co-workers and then I'll just make more of those so whatever she chooses I'll, I'll do more of but in the meantime I'll just do whatever until she tells me do whichever one feels the best All right, almost done. Oh, did I say, did I not say face mask? That could probably be the case. Oh, okay, so, oh, face mask. Oh, I see, you had a, a typo. So Terry says the basic face mask um, takes about 20 minutes. Okay. So I'm guessing that's like the one with the little pleats and no extra, no extra wire and, and any of that. Oh, Joe said that she got her line today. That was quick. So I, I typically try and ship um, by the next day. I, I'm, I'm a little. Uh, I might be a day or two off of that shipping. Oh, you just got your Boston and Bunny, yay! But I am still shipping as long as I can. So I do have to go to the warehouse to do that. But there is no people, except for me and John, at any point during during that process. So. We've been doing carrier pickups um, when we can and uh, for, for the mail and, or we're going to be for sure um, exclusively doing that now. But yeah, until we can't, we will we'll still be shipping. And then we actually might bring a bunch of product home um, so that All right, let me click this. Hold on a moment. Show. All right. Let's weave in the ends here. And that was that was it, right? Yep. The green, Amy says the green was a great choice. Yeah, I'm really liking the green. And it's, it's just like he's standing on in the lawn and the grass as he does at our house, making fun of us fun of us from the window all right you guys <laughs> let's take a look there we are our cute little guy our happy hoarder the little jerk butt <laughs> all right so I'm gonna take this out of the hoop I'm gonna get a little higher up here and I will take this out of the hoop and we will take off the uh, I'm gonna heat up the iron Look at my, my mess next to me here. Let's move some of that out of the way and I will iron it. Actually, all of this can go back in my um, scrappy, my scrap floss bin here. And actually, you know what? I have my my pom-pom maker here. That's what I like doing out of all this excess floss. If I'm not using it for embroidery, I like using the pom-pom maker. Maybe I'll show, I'll do a little video of this coming up too. So that can just go away. Um, here I got my, 
my pressing mat. So I got my iron heating up. I got my pressing mat. And um, all right, so I'm going to take this out of the hoop. And then I'm going to take, you can see, I mean, we've stitched over it quite a bit, but I do still have some blue showing through. So what I'm going to do is just dab that away a little bit. <laughs> He's so silly. Okay. I think we'll just do that right on the table here. So, all right. I have just a little thing of water here. You could actually just kind of run it over the sink, but I just like the dabbing method. So I will get, I just have a kitchen towel here. I will get this super wet. So I'm just going to put the whole globular in here. So there we go. I'm not even really going to squeeze it, squeeze it. And I'm just going to start dabbing over the top of this whole thing. So I'm really kind of getting it wet quite a bit. Um, yeah, so I really am kind of soaking it. Uh, and actually, I'm going to get around where this, uh, where the hoop was too. So we're basically going to kind of steam, steam this. I'm going to get another globular. But our main goal is I want to get that blue out. And you can see it's, it's all disappeared behind, behind this white. It actually works really, really well. Sometimes when it dries, it likes to go on the outer edge of wherever the marking was or wherever the wetness is. So you really want to get it out as much as you can. And, and when it dries, you might have to see if there's any more blue that came back and then just hit it again with some, some um, wetness. But I think we're pretty good there. There Now you can kind of see some of those light light parts up there. Oh, Robin, I'm going to have to see. So I will definitely, Robin's asking if John finished his. I will, um, I'll post a picture of his if, if he finished it or where he's, uh, we'll see where he got on his if he did it. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll post it in the, in the group. All right. So, ooh, I am missing, you know, I typically like having like a poofy towel here. I don't think I have one near me. Let's see. Hmm. All right. You know what? I don't have a poofy like bath towel, uh, but I do have I do have uh, just this um, kitchen towel that I did. So what I like about the poofiness is that it allows our stitches to kind of sink in, so we're not pressing on a super hard surface. So I'm gonna just press on this slightly squishier surface. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna give it a try. And I got my hot iron and I'm going to press, I put the, the good side down and the back side's up and I'm just going to kind of press. You can hear it sizzle. Look, it's already drying. That is dried fabric. So we are pressing and steaming and drying it all at the same time. I love this method. And by the stitches, that'll take a little bit longer. Oh, we're probably, we're kind of adding some texture in. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't a great idea, uh, the texture of the, the dishcloth, but I think we'll be okay. And, uh, but my circle has kind of gone, so that's good. So I am seeing a little bit of that blue come through here still, so I might have to hit this again with water. Let's take a look. So that, that pretty much got this dry. Oh, on the front, it's not so bad. So uh, you can see a little bit of that blue bleeding through here, but since I can't see it on the front, really, I'm going to just kind of, yeah, I can see it a little. I think I might just let it be though, but you can just hit it with a little bit more water and um, just continue to kind of just dab this all out, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, so, all right, now I'm on my flat surface and I'm just going to give it another little press, but I'm going to stay away from the stitches. We're just going to get these extra little bits. And look, it's already dry. <laughs> I mean, that that us getting it all soaking wet didn't, you know, phase it at all. But that's how I like pressing, pressing embroideries. I know that can be scary, scary sometimes for, for people to press it. But there we go. I'll get a little zoomed in a little bit for you. Um, I think he looks super crazy. Crazy little silly stupid squirrel. <laughs> All right, you guys. 
I'm going to flip you around and uh, I'll show you I'll show you this next to a person so you can kind of see the size and I think we will call it a, a day then here all right hello again everyone so back to back to look at so much darker behind me than it was uh, than it was earlier so all right I just want to show you what this looks like all right so here here we are. <laughs> so it's always, I kind of like seeing it next to a person because you can really tell the size a little bit better. I mean, it's, it's so small, just this cute little embroidery. So there we are. <laughs> All right. I think he turned out so fun. I am really happy with it. Uh, the, doing the little toilet paper, that was just kind of neat. So uh, I'd love to see yours. If you are a member of the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook, please share there. I definitely want to uh, see what you're doing. And uh, if not, just email me or, or just Instagram. That's probably the best way. Do an at, uh, tag me with at Penguin and Fish if you do post it on your Instagram. I'd love to see, see it. Um, but awesome. I'm hoping to do a lot more of these lives and uh, hopefully here on YouTube and Facebook. So thank you again, everyone. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. Uh, keep us updated and uh, have a good rest of your weekend here. I will see you later.